Dive into the outside, dives into the end zone. Back inside, he needs one more block. Scores a touchdown. And he gets into the end zone. Welcome in Desert Hills High School. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson with you. Our ideal home and paint game of the night. It's the Thunder of Desert Hills who are 1-0 taking on the Cedar Valley Aviators here on ESPN 97.7. Thanks so much for being with us. We got your Bucks Ace Hardware pregame show coming at you. We'll give you your Camping World keys to the game as well as your Intermountain Sports Performance Star Watch player tonight. Rustin Burnside, how we feeling on week two, buddy. Friday Night Lights about to get underway here from Desert Hills. I'm feeling fantastic. You know, we really have kind of a perfect backdrop going on here at Desert Hills High AT. The clouds, it's still there, so it's a little little shady, but you have the rainbow coming down. It looks like a great time to play football. Between these two squads, a little bit of history together. Of course, they squared off last year. Cedar Valley, only a four-year-old school, very reminiscent of in-region team Crimson Cliffs. But ultimately, this is a squad that took on Desert Hills last year up north that the Thunder ended up beating 38-7. to Two very different teams. Desert Hills has seen some transition on the defensive end. Cedar Valley has seen, seen some uh, – they've seen players stay. It's the first time in their whole history – where they've had somebody who was started as a freshman end up as a senior at this program because of how young they are. So they're feeling pretty good as well. Quarterback Thompson, he's returning after a solid year last year. Had a great week one. I'm really excited for this matchup. I think it's going to be a little different than what we saw last year. Well, let's talk about Thursday Night Lights last week that kicked off the yeah. football season in all of Utah. Desert Hills beating Brighton. And that was one of the most, I think, impressive wins of week one from Region 10. They jumped on them in the first half, slowed down a little bit in the second half, but looked awesome all the way around in all three phases. You know, and a lot of people would say one of the least impressive aspects of an impressive win was that Desert Hills was held scoreless in the first half, okay? And uh, ultimately, or sorry, held scoreless in the second half. And when you look at that, you can look at that as a negative, and I know they're going to want to score a little bit more in tonight's game. But ultimately, the fact that Brighton, as high-powered as they are, held Desert Hill scoreless and the Thunder were still able to hang on, that's a big deal. It shows you that this defense really has a tenacity and a fortitude that, that – was often discussed before the season started. So you have a lot of young guys coming in, Polu and Lou and, and uh, Tafa. These guys are supposed to be your main guys. And instead, um, you're like, they're too young. They, they may not be experienced enough. Instead, they come yeah. out and they absolutely hold on against a very good Brighton team that's 17-2 and two in the regular season the past couple of years. So very impressive win. The offense got it done in the first half. The defense sealed the deal in the second half. You're listening to the Bucks Ace Hardware pregame show inside our Ideal Home and Paint Region 10 game of the night. Check out Ideal Home and Paint, their beautiful new showroom, 4096 South River Road in St. George for everything you need for your home improvement projects this fall. Ideal has that. All right, let's take a look at our Intermountain Sports Performance Star Watch player of the game. Intermountain Sports Performance has been training Region 10 athletes for close to 20 years here in Southern Utah. And every game we pick a Star Watch player. And tonight for Desert Hills, it's number six, Lincoln Holmes, who will go both ways for the Thunder tonight. Yeah, Lincoln is a fantastic ball player in different sports, right? We've seen what he's able to do on the basketball floor for the Thunder and on the football field where he plays both ways. In fact, Lincoln Holmes kicked off our season with the first touchdown of the year, right? He had that big 76-yard reception from Fui that ended up cracking the game, open 6-0 early on. And on the defensive side, he was just as effective. He had a big pass break up there from the safety spot as the game was winding down, Brighton in a position where they had to pick up a first Lincoln Holmes knocks that ball away. Him and Clark were big in that secondary. So offensively scores a touchdown. Uh, his exact stat line, he was looking at two catches, 76 yards in that score. He also got two carries out of the backfield where he ended up picking up 22 yards. So you see him as a receiver. You see him getting carries from out of the backfield. And then you see him really uh, next to Taven Mortensen leading that secondary, who's one of Region 10's best. So I, I love him as our player of the game. And I think tonight against Cedar Valley, uh, a team like this, he has the opportunity to make a really big impact. Intermountain Sports Performance Star Watch player Lincoln Holmes. Watch out for number six tonight. There are your captains out there. Number three, Taven Mortensen. Team Money will be playing on both sides of the ball, but primarily a defensive secondary specialist, Noah Foy Latololo, the star senior quarterback who unfortunately sustained an injury in week one and will not be playing tonight for the Thunder. Azen Cummings, a wide receiver, and of course the big fella, Stuart Taffa are your captains. We're going to take a two-minute break. We'll be back with the national anthem and your, and excuse me, your starting lineups from Desert Hills High School. It's the Thunder versus the Aviators when we come back.
Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Beyond the park you know exists a world you don't. A world that is greater greater than just one passion, greater than just one adventure, greater than just one moment. Come to where life is greater. Come to Greater Zion. Ernie's Two Sinclair Stations want to wish Region 10 athletes the best of luck this season. And stay tuned for the Ernie's Player of the Game. Don't forget to grab an Ernie's Reward Card that allows you to save on fuel and earn points for every dollar spent in store. Get your card today. Ernie's, St. George, Hurricane, Cedar, Inn, and Beaver. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, uh, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. Hi. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls in eighth grade. Oh, yeah. That one day at PE when they were, like, yelling at me, and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much, like, that helped me, because, like, I finally, like, knew that I had somebody. Thanks for joining us. You're looking live at Desert Hills High School for week two football action as the Thunder taking on the Cedar Valley Aviators who won their week one matchup, as did Desert Hills. Time now for our Camping World keys to the game. Rustin, check out Camping World for your outdoor adventures this fall, 1500 uh, down by the boulevard and uh, also Camping World St. George Dot com. Yeah, let's jump right into them, AT. You talk about both of these guys winning that game one matchup. You had Desert Hills in particular take down Brighton. We've already touched on that game, a 42-35 victory for the Aviators against the Copper Hills Grizzlies and what was a 28-7 game at one point. And that's what leads me into point number one. This feels like Desert Hills game to lose, all right? They're the favorite. You're not really denying that, especially after what you saw last year as the Thunder run out onto the field with smoke billowing here at Desert Hills High. But after, after considering that, Cedar Valley has some confidence. They got great returning starters. Desert Hills can't afford to get too comfortable or conservative. We saw in that 28-7 lead against Brighton, they held up a little bit, and they allowed Brighton to get back in that ball game, making it 28-21 at one point, and a lot tighter than initially anticipated. And Cedar Valley on the other end, they also let up in their ball game, giving up 28 points in the fourth. They can't afford for that to happen. Both of these teams should be looking sharp. They should be looking poised for all four quarters. Number two, expect a balanced attack from the Aviators. If you're the Thunder looking at the opposition, this is what you're looking at. Week one against Copper Hills saw Thompson attempt 26 passes and saw the backfield rush 24 times. That is the definition of a balanced attack, 26-24 when it comes to a pass-run ratio. So don't be surprised if the Aviator, Aviators have a healthy mix of both things from the offensive game. But after watching Desert Hills week one, we know they're up to the task. The secondary closed the game out. Holmes and Clark with big plays. They had three picks. Tuckness had seven tackles from the cornerback spot, while Lou had an interception, so they're capable of it. Lastly, no disrespect to one of the most exciting receiving cores in the entire region. You got the Cummings boys. You got Mortensen. You got Holmes. But tonight needs to be tied in Morris's night. 7.4 yards per carry. In that game against Brighton, a very good team. They need to ride him early and often, 181 total purpose yards in that victory over the Bengals. All right, that's Rustin Burnside with our Camping World keys to the game. We're going to take a break for the national anthem. We'll be back in two minutes from Desert Hills High School.
Fabulous Freddy's is the local's choice for a full-service car wash. It's fast. Have your car washed in just 20 minutes or less. Fabulous Freddy's always keeps it clean inside and out with two Southern Utah locations as well as in Vegas, Lehigh, and Sandy. Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder. Space to connect. Space to imagine. Space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. Ideal Home and Paint. Ideal has all the top quality brands like PPG, Pratt & Lambert, and Cimarron Floor Epoxy Coatings. Ideal has that. Check out their Paint Design Center, 4096 South River Road, or call 656-0801. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. <laughs> yeah! Sam, Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia! Are you ready to play band with us? I'm gonna play my clarinet. And Elmo's gonna play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Welcome back. Region 10 football game of the night brought to you by Ideal Home and Paint. Check out Ideal Home and Paint for all your home improvement needs this fall. 4096 South River Road. All right, Rustin, we talked about Lincoln Holmes for the Thunder being a key player. Yeah. But we also know there's a young sophomore quarterback and Bo Wall getting the start. We'll talk a little bit more about him. But also, I want to know who your guy is for Cedar Valley. We should keep an, an eye out for here in week two for the Aviators. Well, you know, everybody's going to go with somebody like a Clayson Jenkins, wearing number four on his jersey, or a K.J. Fisher. In fact, their stat lines last week alone, Fisher was accountable for two touchdowns off the hands of Thompson, and Jenkins had three himself on 17 carries, 180 yards. So we talk about Titan Morris and yeah. his yards per carry average being impressive. Uh, Jenkins is right there as well. But I I really like K.J. Fisher at the wide receiver spot. Him and Thompson have a connection. Cedar Valley, first time where they've had somebody start as a freshman, finish as a senior. This is their fourth year in school history. And Thompson and Fisher have had time to work with each other, both returning starters, which goes a long way. Jenkins comes in and gives that running game everything that it needs. But I really like the connection that these two have. And when the going gets tough, expect Thompson to look for number six in K.J. Fisher. And by the way, Cooper Thompson deserving of a shout out as well. 73% completion percentage, 19 to 26, 299 yards, one short of that 300 mark and three touchdowns in that win against Copper Hills. Back deep for the Thunder to return the kickoff. Cyrus Polu, the big linebacker and running back and do-it-all man for the Thunder. He's wearing number 33 tonight. Just a 10th grader, and they've got a bunch of young talent on this Thunder team. We'll tell you all about 
as the game progresses. Here's the big kick. It's football time in Southern Utah. And here is Polu on the return. He's at the 10, the 15, looking for a block. Scoots out to the left, hits his own man, stays on his feet, gets to the 25, barreling around through defenders and gets nearly to the 30-yard line. Nice return by Cyrus Polu. One of my favorite plays in all of football is when your own guy gets in your way and instead of stopping or holding up, you run him over and you keep moving. Polu has that same mentality on this side, returning kicks as well as on the defensive side. He had two tackles for a loss in that victory over Brighton last week and ended actually that game with seven total tackles altogether, eight tackles altogether. But what a return right there to give him a little extra yardage, even if it included running over his own guy. A little stoppage of play. There's an equipment issue with one of the safeties on the aviators. The referee saying, go, you got to take that anklet off <laughs> or whatever. He's a puka necklace or whatever, puka shell. And we've got Bo Wall in at quarterback. We're in number four. We went to practice a couple nights ago, saw him throwing it around with that first team offense, and he looked solid. Of course, the big man, Titan Morris, the featured back tonight for Desert Hills, and put on a showcase in week one, kind of announcing himself as one of the best backs, I think, in the state this year. Easily. Here's Wall, shotgun, motions Azen Cummings over, will hand it to him on the jet sweep. He breaks a tackle, then almost dodges another one, but a nice play made there on the corner by Joel Mayu. Let's, let's address the elephant in the room here early on, which we didn't really address pregame because we didn't want to get ahead of ourselves, but with, with Fui, who was accountable yeah. for three touchdowns total, out of the game, you have Wall stepping in, and you want him to be comfortable. But you also have such a talented receiving core that you have to get them involved early and often, and that's what we see immediately from the get-go with that give to Cummings. And I think we can expect to see a lot more of that tonight. Here comes the micro machine, Zachary Ford into the game as Lincoln Holmes gets a breather on the second play of the game. Jet sweep, they go to Ford. Ford scoots it outside, turns it upfield, gets a good block. He's got a man to beat before he gets to the sideline and he's twisted around and tackled, but not after a fabulous Freddy's first down and an electric run there by Ford. And Ford is that guy when he steps into the ball game, you know he's electric. And the big, the big thing with him, and Ford is a name that's gone back through Desert Hills the last couple years, yep. we know they can contribute. But he's got that speed, and it really helps when you have the big body of Tyden Morris sealing off the corner for you. Great block from number one. Trips to the far side. His pitch out to Tyden Morris. He cuts it back to the middle. Good penetration there by the Aviators to stop him right around the line of scrimmage on first down. That was absolutely fantastic push right there from the Aviator defensive line. And I think the tackle's going to be credited to 79. But look right here, that block that, got, that was shedded right off yeah, I think 79 ultimately got around the ankles. That is going to be for Cedar Valley, Dean Caldwell. Second and long. Here's Bo Wall. Takes the snap straight, drop back, looking down over to the right side. Throws it nearly intercepted. It was right in the midst of Dylan Westbrook, and he just couldn't reel it in. And that could have been a huge error there early in this game for Desert Hills. And Wall saw the man in front of him ultimately peel off and knew that a defender was coming his direction, maybe a slight case of the jitters, but the pocket before that was, was relatively clean. I think he's going through his reads. Huge third down here. Here's Wall, he's gonna roll out left, looking downfield, he's gonna pull it down and run it, and he's gonna be forced out of bounds after a gain of three yards, but well short of the first down. They are on the plus side of the field, rust, and we'll see what uh, Coach Jim Eggleston, the OC, wants to do here. He's gonna bring in the special teams unit as expected to punt it away. And here's, here's the situation on that. For Wall, right here, he just nearly threw a pick on that last play. This one, as he rolls to the left, he could have tried to make something happen. He could have forced it. But at the same time, you're almost okay. Give it back to the defense. You know they're capable. And uh, punt it away safely rather than having a return. Nice snap to Polu. He puts his cleat into it. It's going to bounce at about the 20-yard line and bounce laterally and down inside the 20 yard line at the 19 and that's where the aviators will take over after giving up one fabulous freddy's first down to ford but then they were able to stop desert hills and, and force the punt there in that first possession uh, were you surprised at all at by the by the play calling there not that it was right or not that it was wrong but I expected to see a lot of Titan Morris early on, and we saw one Titan Morris carry? A couple jet sweeps, one to Titan, and then a couple throws. And here come the Aviators for the first time tonight. 
Straight drop back, five wide, throws it outside and low, bounces off the turf, incomplete attended for Tegan Hansen. Hansen, a big part of the Aviators offense, but as well on top of that, had eight tackles for this Aviators defensive unit and that win over Copper Hills. So Cedar Valley starts the game with a pass. Like I said in pregame, Campbell will keys to the game. This is a balanced team. Yeah. 26 pass attempts, 24 run attempts last game against the Grizzlies. And I think, uh, I think we're gonna see that same balance tonight. Here, here's Thompson, bunch trips to the near side. He's going to fake the handoff and throw out a bubble complete to Baker. Baker shakes and bakes, but he's grabbed and wrapped around by, I think that was Azen Cummings who put an end to that play. Big tackle there by Cummings. And ultimately right now for Baker, we've seen a lot of his, basically his high school career, him do this type of thing where he's able to catch it and make guys miss. So a really solid wrap up right there because he's quick, he's shifty, four catches, 64 yards last week for number one. Third down, about nine and a half yards to go for the Aviators. Here comes Thompson, fakes the handoff again, then throwing over the middle to the seams. Got a man open, can he hang on to the ball? He does, nice catch by Ethan Johnson, touch pass. Beautifully done there by Thompson, and a fabulous Freddy's first down. Ethan Johnson was the one receiver last week who had a touchdown that was not named K.J. Fisher. Right here comes up with a big first down. Just was able to use that body to stay in front of the defender, kind of seal him off, similar to a uh, post player down low covering that block. Used it to his ability. Appreciate fabulous Freddy's. Two locations in southern Utah for you to fuel it up, wash it down, and also try the Ike's famous sandwiches. They are unbelievable. Believable award winning sandwiches at Fabulous Freddy's on Bluff Street. Under center now for Thompson, a motion man over. Pitch it out, student body left. Here's the pitch outside. Can he get the corner? No. Well defended on that right edge as Joe Lomu goes for no gain. That was a play that was nearly disastrous. Watch this push. Number 52 comes back into the legs of his own quarterback as he attempts to pitch that. Great, great get off for the Desert Hills Thunder defensive line. And uh, unfortunately for the Thunder, he was able to pitch it away cleanly, but that was a bang bang type situation. Tamatasi Villamai Swata. I butchered that, but that was the defensive lineman that did a great job there for Desert Hills. Sauta. Here's the handoff from Thompson, right back up the middle. Quick hitter and a good burst. The ball comes out. Desert Hills is on it. And they're going to say that's a live ball, and it's the Thunder's ball after the turnover. Taven Mortensen, who else? T-Money, Johnny on the spot. And this is Jenkins, haven't called his name a lot yet. We see that speed he's familiar with, and as he goes down, that ball, that's, that's tough. That happened. Uh, it almost seemed it was caused as he went to the turf. The officials have a better view of it than us, and Desert Hills will have the football. Let's see this Let's, again. He's because in traffic. Nah. That's, that's close. I think it's. I think it came out slightly before. I think it may have. Here's the snap. Wall looking right. He's pressured. He's be flushed out to the left. He'll pull it down and run and then be tackled a couple of yards after the line of scrimmage. Good play there coming up from the secondary by Tegan Hansen to make the tackle. Yeah, Hansen, eight tackles last week. Like we said, very capable for this Aviators defensive unit. And you'll notice right here with Wall. It's a lot of running around the backfield, kind of trying to figure out what's there. And by the time he makes his way back up to the line of scrimmage, Cedar Valley's already caught up to him. 0-0 zero, zero ball game here in the first quarter. This is Desert Hill's second possession. 7-15 on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard left in the first quarter. Motion Man is Lincoln Holmes. They'll give it to him short side of the field on the jet sweep. Flag flies at the line of scrimmage as they knock out Holmes after a decent gain on the run. We'll see what the flag is. Yeah, Holmes had two carries against Brighton, so this isn't an unfamiliar sight. You can use him in a variety of different ways, not just as a wide out. That'll be a hold against Desert Hills. And that'll be Gene Van Orden, the white hat. The legendary Gene Van Orden, done a great job so for so many years here in Southern Utah as the lead official. As he picks up that yellow flag, I do have to give the Thunder credit. Not a lot of penalties in that Brighton game. It was yeah. a pretty clean football game on Thursday night, and that was a that was a high stakes, tired team had a long bus ride delay, so a lot of credit to them. They're they're pretty pretty well disciplined. Second and long from the 47 yard line for Wall. He's pressured. He's going to throw a fade route up top to Mortensen. There is a flag on the field, and we'll see if there's going to be a defensive hold 
on the near side of the field on Morty. They love that one-on-one -on -one matchup for him to just go get it, but he was slowed down on the route. Yeah, and, and good recognition right there from Wall. I know he's settling into the game. The That's exactly what we'll get. Good call there, AT. The and it'll bring him closer to the first down, but it won't be an automatic first. Down by the shadows, just a little bump. Yeah. And what do you think, Burns? It was enough to get Mortensen to react. Uh, I'd say Second half the time, a high school Hunter. official probably isn't going to call that. But this this ref, he had a good eye on it, ended up throwing the flag as Mortensen kind of put both hands in the air. And uh, Thunder driving. Second down and four to go. Wall over throws Cummings, who is coming on a shallow cross route. Would have been a first down, but it falls incomplete. Javen Cummings was running a post behind him, and he kind of threw it in between both of them, and it'll be another third down coming after Desert Hills. Hey, the routes are there. The, re the, the idea is there. The one-on-one -on -one to Mortensen, that's the right idea. Finding Cummings in the middle, that's the right idea. Wall just has to take a breath, settle in, and say, I can make these throws. I've done it a ton of different times in practice because I like the looks. Just we haven't seen the conversion so far. Tide Morris, sidecar to the left of Wall. Straight drop back, back pass again. They're going to throw a screen. It's caught by Morris. He's tackled short of the line to gain. Nice catch on a ball that was thrown low, but good recognition by the Aviators to get to him and make the tackle before the first down. That was Westbrook again. Yeah, Westbrook, solid positioning there. Fisher provided the initial pressure that made Wall just kind of throw it a little low. Morris didn't have or didn't have enough time to necessarily recover and get the speed he wanted to as Westbrook brought him down. Here's Polo punting it away again. Kicks it from his own 45 yard line. Ball fair caught inside the 20 for the avia eight, excuse me, Aviators and that's what they'll take over with 6-11 left on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard. Thanks for being with us, with us our ideal home and pain game of the night. What do you think offensively so far? Not a lot of Morris early in this game for the Thunder, Rustin. Well, it's it's a perplexing thing, not in a bad way, but in the sense of your starting quarterback, your star quarterback's out, okay? So you bring in the sophomore, he's getting his first start. You expect when you have guys like, um, like Morris, like Kona Kroll, like Ford in particular, that you're going to see a lot of running. But that's not the case. They're using this 0-0 score and trying to get their quarterback comfortable because it could be something that eventually wins them the ball game in the long run if it comes down to Wall's arm. Thompson's looking at the throw. He throws it in the middle, broken coverage. He's wide open. That is Tegan Hansen makes a move, makes another move, and will get even more yardage. There was an ocean around him to catch that ball and run as nobody was on him and a big gainer there on first down for the Aviators. And right now with Cedar Valley, just a, a defensive breakdown. You see two Desert Hill secondary players covering one guy. They get there late and they're able to advance it into Thunder territory. And here come the Aviators, they're moving fast. Twins to either side for Thompson. First and 10 inside Thunder territory, Thompson Hands it up the middle, and that's worked a couple times. He stays on his feet, oh, wow. breaks a couple tackles, and Clayson Jenkins showing off the yards after contact. Runs through a few arm tackles there, Rustin. And the thing with Jenkins is he doesn't necessarily look like the biggest bodied back, but look at this pursuit. Lowers the left shoulder there, slips an arm tackle there, gets past Cummings, who tries to shove him to the ground, just hard running. Hard count, gets Desert Hills to jump, and that'll be five more yards inside the red zone now for the Aviators after two big plays to start this drive here in the first quarter. Well, it's right there. It's just a common case of Desert Hills being a little antsy. You've had two huge plays against you within the last minute, and uh, now you're trying to overcompensate for that by being more aggressive than per usual, and you end up committing that penalty. 529, or excuse me, 520 in county here on our We Win Injury Law scoreboard in the first quarter. 0 0 ball game between the Aviators and the Thunder. Both teams 1 and 0 coming into week two. Here comes Thompson. In the shotgun. Desert Hills with their four man front defensively. He's going to motion across Klein. Fake the handoff, throws it, corner out, just overthrows an open man, Ethan Johnson. There was a bunch of Thunder players over there, but Johnson kind of came in the middle of all of them 
and he couldn't be found there by Thompson. Yeah, looking for Johnson. Fisher was also kind of there. It was one of those balls where you're not quite sure fully what receiver he was targeting. I'd agree with you. There was probably right. Johnson. He was going, I think he was going to Fisher, who's number six. See, this is how confusing it is. <laughs> they were right there. Trips to the far side now for Thompson. Second down. And five to go. We'll see if they just want to run it a couple times or if they keep it in the air. Thompson motions a guy over and then sends him back, then hands it right up the middle. And a big bang at the line of scrimmage. But the Aviators burst through and get right near the yard marker to gain. And it might be spotted just short of the first down marker. Big run here, lower in a shoulder, big impact. Just a little bit short. That was Joe Lomu. And you saw that pile surround the ball carrier. And typically, that's where all progress starts. but. Lo and behold, you have a Thunder player pushed out the other side. He's able to pick up a little bit more, creating a, a third and short right here for Cedar, Cedar Valley. And between Lomu and Jenkins, we know that they can, uh, they're can they more than capable of picking up a yard or two. We'll see what they draw up here. High formation, or veer formation. We'll see under center hands it off just to a fullback to Fisher. And they have that in their repertoire. Not a lot of teams have that, Rustin, where in short yard situations, go under center, give it to a fullback, and he gets the first down. Brought to you by Fabulous Freddy's. And for Fisher, we've seen him lined up as a wideout this whole game. That's the position he plays. We haven't really seen him work out of the backfield with Jenkins and, and Lomu there, but they bring him in the fullback, like you said. They run it to perfection, throws the defense off just enough, and he has that firepower to... Uh, Get the first down. First and yes. goal. The Aviators with the ball. Thompson's going to throw it. Corner out and incomplete. He couldn't get off the defender. Good job tying up, tying him up over there by Hunter Clark, who has a size disadvantage in that matchup, but made it up for it with great physicality on that play. Clark had a really big play against Brighton star receiver Matheson last week. When Brighton was down by a score, they fired deep to the right side of the field. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Clark broke that up. We know in one-on-one -on -one situations that he is plenty capable of creating a bit of havoc or at least getting the stop. Thompson bunch trips to the far side. Running back with him is Clayson Jenkins. We'll see if they want to put it in the air again on second down. No, they'll give it to Jenkins on that left side off tackle. He cuts it back up the middle. Touchdown, Aviators. How about that move right there from Jenkins? That little, as he's running to the left, little stutter step cuts back, and it was just quick. We've seen him bowl guys over. How about the speed to make this happen? And a lot of credit here to Cedar Valley's offensive line. I don't know if he was really necessarily touched there, A.T. Cuts back, does the old put the cleat in the turf, cuts it back up the middle through his seam, and nobody touches him. For the first touchdown of the game, Cedar Valley goes up 6-0 on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard. P.A.T. pending. Your snap is good. Kick is up. And it looks good to me. That's 7-zip. Cedar Valley with... 3.37 left here in the first quarter on your Region 10 Radio Network, ESPN 97.7. We'll be right back. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. Hi. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls in eighth grade. Oh, yeah. That one day at PE when they were, like, yelling at me, and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much, like, that helped me because, like, I finally, like, knew that I had somebody. Welcome back. Desert Hills High School Aviators with the 7-0 lead here late in the first quarter over the Thunder. And Rustin's spotted himself a snack in the bleachers from a Desert Hills fan that just looks a dynamite right now, Rustin, as the kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. What are you seeing down there? Uh, that is going to be animal crackers, but they're not just animal crackers. That's chocolate edition AT, yeah. which uh, I, I just feel comes out supreme. Don't get me wrong. I'll eat a whole bag of regular ones. But chocolate just does the trick. Those look fantastic. First and 10 from the 24, the Thunder, who have sputtered on offense so far this game. We'll see if they run the ball a couple times or if they are content to keep jet sweeping from corner to corner. 
and then throwing the ball because, like, uh, you know, we kind of keep saying, Tide Morris, featured back of this offense, not a lot of touches so far. Here comes the jet sweep to Holmes on that left side. He peeks his way for a good gain, about oh, seven yards for Lincoln who just kind of casually takes his time, super patient, and yeah. gets seven yards there. Well, they ran a play very similar to this not too long ago that was brought back to a, to a holding penalty that also went for about the same amount of yards. So it's proven to be a successful play early on, and that time, no holding penalty, so they'll keep the yardage. Second down, two yards to go for the Thunder. Wall in the backfield with Morris. Trips to the far side. They're going to throw a swing pass outside to Morris. He drops it. And the ball is incomplete, and it'll be third down coming up for the Thunder. And how about busting through right there? It was Tegan Hansen sheds the block. Morris, uh, I mean, that ball's on the ground. Tegan immediately on top of it. It doesn't matter in the long run, but it kind of paints a picture of this ball game so far. The Aviators have got really good push. They've got really good separation off of blocks, and this defense right now for Cedar Valley is flying around out there, no pun intended. Hansen's been the player of the game for that Aviators Defense, flag on the play, but Kona Kroll gets his first carry of the game and gets enough for a fabulous well, Freddy's first down, but a flag the in the Thunder backfield. Flag the we'll anticipate a holding call here. Very clean game last week for the most part. Hasn't been the case early on, and I think they're I think they're just a little worried about the, the get off that the Aviators are getting, and that's the first time we've seen Kona. Yeah. We've seen Ford, we've seen Titan, we've seen Lincoln Holmes out of the backfield, but Kona comes in, had a touchdown last week against the Bengals. We've seen what he's capable of last year, this year, and uh, I like the run, but it's just these, these mistakes right now that are really, really hurting you. They'll take it back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be third and 10 for Bo Wall and the Thunder. We'll see what they draw up here. A little bit of a struggle to be in sync with his receivers so far tonight on pass plays, but I think that's what they are gonna go for here on a third and 10 situation. Here's Wall, straight drop back, looking to the right, then looking to the left. Mortensen on a hitch, comes back to it, but good pressure by the Aviators, forces Wall once again out of the pocket and they flush him out of bounds, and Desert Hill's gonna be forced to punt again. And on this play, Kona Kroll actually does a really good job of holding his own uh, due to the young oncoming pressure. Watch him pick up this block here, not an easy thing to do, but Wall, this is, this is really his first big varsity experience, so even the slightest amount of movement around you can kind of get you rattled, and I completely understand that. Tries to get something done with his legs, instead the Thunder will punt it away. Here's another punt for the Thunder here late in the first quarter. They trail 7-0 to the Aviators. Good Thunder bounce there. And it'll be downed at about the 36-37 yard line. And that's where the Aviators, who had a red hot drive there last time with the ball, will take over. Thanks for being with us. Ideal home and paint game of the night here on ESPN 97.7. You can also watch it at sportsradio977.com with the CEC crew. Filming the pictures for you tonight, the best in the business. Also appreciate We Win Injury Law, our scoreboard sponsor. 2.47 left here in the first quarter. 7-0 ball game. And you got to think with all those chunk plays Cedar Valley had on that last drive, what do we see from the Thunder defense? I, I, it's early on in the ball game, but I feel like they haven't quite established an identity yet in this game specifically. So I'm anxious to see what type of looks they try to give this Aviator offense who's feeling confident. And they're going to run a counter right up the middle. And he's going to battle for another five or six, seven, eight yards on first down. And the Aviators right now, Rustin, are winning the battle of the A-gap. And they're pushing around the Thunder a little bit. Huge gaps there for the Aviator running backs. And they've been doing a great job all night long. Let's give it up to the offensive line for Cedar Valley and the defensive line. Both the big boys in the trenches tonight have made a very big impact early on uh, with, with two minutes, 15 seconds remaining over there on your clock. But they've, they've been all over on both sides of the field. And right now this offensive line getting all the push they need to allow these running backs with a little bit of room. Under center again, motions the wide receiver across the formation. Another ISO up the middle. Good job getting in the backfield there by Polu, but a better effort by the running back, number four, Jenkins, who is slippery, Rustin. Yeah, and a great stiff arm right there. Polu hanging on for dear life, does a good job staying with him. Holmes cleans it up, but it's enough for an aviator 
first down, and that's the thing. Even when the offensive line doesn't get pushed, these running backs are big enough and strong enough that they're able to still punish a defender in a one-on-one -on -one situation like we just witnessed right there. Defensive lineman for the Thunder getting a breather as Davis Olsen comes in at that right defensive end position. And I also think they brought in Tate Nunley at the left defensive end. We'll see if they can slow down this aviator offense. Snap, looking to throw, blown dead. We're going to have a timeout by the Aviators. And we'll go ahead and take it. 7-0 on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard with 119 left in the first quarter. Aviators lead the Thunder. We'll be back right after this. This is Tyler from We Win Injury Law. We win for you, period. If you have been in a motorcycle accident, car accident, hit by a semi-truck, or bitten by a dog, we will fight and win for you, period. Visit 435wewin.com to have me look at your case. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. First and 10 for Cedar Valley. 119 in the first quarter on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard. Here's Thompson, trips to the far side, takes the snap, hands it right up the middle. And once again, Lomu has room. He cuts it outside, gets a fabulous Freddy's first down and a few yards more. And the run game is rolling right now for the Aviators. The offensive line's rolling, the running backs are rolling, and for Joe Lomu, Game one against Copper Hills, three carries, seven yards. So tonight they've really been able to utilize both backs in that in that high pressure situation where Copper Hills begin to mount that comeback. They kind of just stuck with their main man Jenkins. But tonight in this situation where they're in the driver's seat, both running backs have got their fair share and both have produced at a high level thus far. And we have an official uh, timeout here by the Thank you White wants, Hat. I think he wants the clock reset, AT. Yep, he sets it to five. 105. There you go. Kelsey Hofer, if you could please come it was, box, was 57. Please. We'll see as Ocean Taffa re-enters the game, the ninth grader at left end. Had a great game against Brighton. And we'll see if Desert Hills can get push here on first down or if the Aviators just continue to run it between the tackles. No, they're going to throw it. Post over to number five. Good effort by Johnson. Just couldn't corral it. Almost kind of had to make a one-handed effort there on the post. We have a Thunder player down. On coverage was Tuckness, I believe, number 14, who does a great job. And he's he gets help to his feet and then immediately stumbles backward and goes back down. And that is a terrible sight to see, especially for, for Tuckness, who had such a big week one game. Seven tackles from the cornerback spot, AT. He's a big part of this Thunder defense. And we'll go ahead and take a break with the player down. We'll take a 45-second break. We'll come back. Hopefully, he's able to hop back up and get back in the game for the Thunder. Quick, quick. Let's make it a 30-second break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> yeah, Sam, Elmo. Oh, hey, Julia. Are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Second and 10 after the incompletion, Tuckness was able to get off the field. Walking off, being checked out by the trainers. Here's Thompson, gives it to Jenkins up the middle. That's been their bread and butter, and he gets another fabulous Freddy's first down just on a simple run play right at the teeth of the Thunder defense. What, what are you supposed to do there? Watch Mortensen. He flies in here, goes for the leg tackle because he's been bowling over everybody, and he just turtles it. He ups right over it. So it's up, up high, down low. Jenkins just proving to be elusive tonight. Kid's an athlete. 43 seconds and ticking here in the first quarter. Cedar Valley leads 7-0 to zero over Desert Hills as they are approaching the red zone. And they've just been able to run, run, run so far in the first quarter. Five wide, 
as Thompson going to take the shotgun snap here. Desert Hills getting settled defensively. And Thompson takes the snap, looking to throw an out route. And then a nice catch with a sticky mitts by Ethan Johnson as the ball was a little outside, but he got to the turf and made a great play. Had five catches in that week one win, 79 yards. And tonight, he's uh, he's got more targets so far than Fisher. And that's going to be the first quarter as the Aviators threatening once again. They've got the 7-0 lead on our We Win Injury Law scoreboard over Desert Hills. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this on ESPN 97.7. Since 1946, Wilkinson's House of Lighting has been a fan of all Southern Utah high school sports. These are special kids. Help us celebrate these young men and women and all the student athletes by getting out to the games and cheering them on. From Wilkinson's House of Lighting. <laughs> yeah! Sam, Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia! Are you ready to play band with us? I'm gonna play my clarinet. And Elmo's gonna play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Uh, Julia knows. Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> play band! <sighs> Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Welcome back. Thanks for being with us. Our Ideal Home Event Game of the Night at Desert Hills High School here on ESPN 97-7. The Aviators surprising some people early in this one, Rustin. This game was 38-7 last year. Desert Hills got the victory, but they're trailing early in this one as we start the second quarter. Cedar Valley leads 7-zip. And let's give the Aviators a ton of credit here. It's not just a matter of Desert Hills is without their star quarterback, okay? That's, that's not the reason right now. The Aviators are controlling this game at the line of scrimmage early on and I, I mean correct me if I'm wrong here but on the offensive line defensive line they're just creating a lot of havoc defensively and a lot of room offensively and the running backs are so t talented and elusive that anytime they even have the slightest bit of room from this line they're they're punishing this thunder defense so it's not just a the thunder are down a big player at least that's not the story early on second and four coming up for the aviators as the officials are, are taking a little, uh, making a little powwow right around the 20 yard line. Appreciate all of our sponsors helping us bring you the game tonight, including Intermountain Sports Performance. They've been training Region 10 athletes for close to 20 years here in Southern Utah, making them move a little quicker, run a little faster, and perform a little better on the field. There's several out there playing right now for Desert Hills. Intermountain Sports Performance, a proud sponsor of Region 10 Athletics. And we're going to have an official timeout on the field. And what do you think, Rustin? Uh, Cedar Valley looking stellar, just running power football right at Desert Hills, running the ball, and Thunder have been unable to stop it. Well, I, I've talked about the offensive line enough that people are probably sick of it, but there's no other way around it. They're just controlling the ball game. It, it, everything that happens has been really due to the athleticism that Cedar Valley possesses, but really the big guys up front getting things done. And if I'm the Thunder right now, I've been backpedaling most this ball game. So you have to find some way, some direction to just get the tiniest bit of penetration. And plays like that are, are risky in the sense of you don't want to give up the big play, especially right now where it's 7-0. You know, you have a newer quarterback under center. It's not as if your offense is, is a proven entity right now. You're not quite sure what you're going to get or what to expect. But the defense is, uh, is really going to need just something to get on through and break through and, and cause a little bit of havoc because how many plays this game can you think of where Cedar Valley, or I mean where Desert Hills has gotten to Cedar Valley's backfield and created some chaos? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm drawing a blank yeah, right now. And we, right. Know, we know they're plenty capable of it. Of it. They, they have a great defense, albeit a young defense, and I think this is a defense that learns as the game goes on. So I know they're going to make some changes here, um, but right now we're not seeing it. All right, so there was confusion on what play it was as far as the down, and they've 
come to a conclusion that they'll go ahead and say, we're going to say that's an official timeout. We won't charge that against any one of the teams, and we'll go to second down and four to go for the Aviators. Here to start the second quarter with Jenkins, the running back, who's been a star for him early in this game. Here's Thompson, takes the snap, hands it to Jenkins right up the middle, and he has room to run. He's still going, and they'll slam him down eventually, and then there's going to be a flag thrown on the throwdown by Polu, and they're going to say that's excessive. I'm going to want a look at this, too. A couple fans in the stands throw their hands up. Polu definitely swung around when he tossed Jenkins down. And I, I don't know if the whistle blew and then he threw him down or finished through or if it was just the way in which he did it. See Jenkins get tied up. You have a hand kind of around his head. Do you think that's maybe more so what it was? Is yeah, it could have been uh, contributed to the call. He was still trying to move forward. That's always tough for the defender because is his forward progress stop? When's the whistle going to blow? Right. He still seems to be trying to go forward. My job is to put him on the turf. Unfortunately, Polo does it with what they determine to be excessive force. And, and they, so. they're right around the same area they were last time Jake and scampered in for a touchdown. We'll see if they draw up something similar or if they try to work somebody like Fisher in the end zone. First and goal once again for the Aviators. Can they extend the lead to two scores here in the second quarter over Desert Hills? Here's Thompson, twins to either side, takes the high snap, hands it to Jenkins. Jenkins tries to get outside. Nice play outside by Taffa. Ocean Taffa, the ninth grader, slams him down. There it is. That's that's exactly what we've been discussing, what we've been waiting for. And Taffa, who had a huge game against Brighton, busts on through. One-on-one -on -one opportunities against Jenkins tonight have not proved to be successful for the opposition. Right there, Ocean flipped the script, and maybe that will give the confidence to this Thunder defense that they need, especially right here in the red zone. Second now. Second down and goal from the nine. And they'll go five wide, the Aviators. Somewhat surprising to me. We'll see if they're going to motion around. Yes, they will. Fisher, and they're looking left to him. Throw it on the inside man, and he throws it, misses everybody except for T-Money. Taven Mortensen with the pick in the end zone. Desert Hills ball, another turnover for the Aviators. One of the best ball hawks in all of Utah 4A, if not the state of Utah, doesn't have to do much ball hawking right here. He just has to stand his ground and catch that right on the numbers for Mortensen, his second interception of the season, his first today. He had one against Brighton. And how about that? That's exactly what they need, back-to-back -back plays. You have Ocean Breakthrough and bring down Jenkins, and then you get a little bit of pressure on Thompson. And I apologize, I didn't see who it was making Thompson sweat a little bit there, but he throws the pick in the red zone. You got a different ball game now. And Mortensen also had the fumble recovery earlier on in the game. Jet sweep yep. outside to Lincoln Holmes around the left corner. He gets the corner, gets through a couple defenders, gets the fabulous Freddy's first down at about seven yards more. Big run there for Lincoln Holmes. Lincoln Holmes, the leading rusher tonight early on in this 7 nothing Cedar Valley lead. And uh, every time he's touched the ball, he's made something happen. He had one play called back due to a holding penalty, but a couple successful end arounds. Nice seal on that left side by Stuart Taffa to help yes. Lincoln get the edge as they look over, the offense looks over to the sideline to get the call. Zachary Ford back in the game in the slot for the Thunder. Always fun when he's in the game. Wall going to motion him, give him the ball. Big block there by Tide Morris. Here comes Ford, cuts it up but only for about a yard. Good pursuit by the Aviators once again. Yeah, it was Travion Marshall had six tackles in that win over Copper Hills. Great block from Morris, like you said, but look at Marshall. He just didn't slow down or give, or he didn't hold up or wait for a teammate to get it done. He decided to continue to pursue, made a big tackle. Second down, nine yards to go. Trips to the far side for the Thunder. Here's Wall. Cummings on the near side, lone receiver. And he's going to try to hand it off, but the ball hits the turf on the exchange. It's still on the turf, and then dove on by the Aviators, Tegan Hansen, who's been everywhere. And just on the mesh, the ball flew it's out onto the turf, and it'll be Aviators' ball. See, when you're a new quarterback coming in the game, people think, well, what about the chemistry with the receivers? Is he going to know yeah. where, they, where they want the ball, the routes? It's not just that. The most overlooked aspect as well is 
does he know how his running back wants it? Does he know how to hand it off in this situation? And right here, I, I don't know whose fault it was. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but there's cl a clear yeah. miscommunication, right? That's a great point. It's always about the receivers and the quarterback, but with the zone read being such a huge part of pretty much everybody's offense, yeah. that chemistry is important between running back and quarterback. And that time, Desert Hills turns the ball over. Here's the Aviators. After that huge stop and turnover by Desert Hills, now Cedar Valley's got the ball and threatening position again. They're going to do a Ooh. flea flicker after a double reverse. Thompson's going to throw it down the field. Well covered by Desert Hills. Good job recovering by the Thunder. And guess who's back in the game? Riker Tuckness was there to help defend. And you need Tuckness in the game. He's so good. And look at look at the pursuit. You see Kona here with great pursuit. He doesn't give up. It goes from one guy to another to another. And whoever had the ball, he was chasing. And great job by the secondary of Desert Hills to sit back on that one because it's so easy to run up and think, i got to make a play. i got to make a play on the ball. We're down 7 nothing. Got to make something happen. Instead, they keep their heads on and create a break up there. Just a solid defensive stand. 9-20 in our We Win Injury Law scoreboard. Here in the second quarter, Cedar Valley leads 7-0, and they're in Thunder territory here on the Thunder 30-yard line. Here's Thompson, hands it up the middle. Loma gets another good gain, and a fabulous Freddy's first down, just an ISO right up the middle, and he pays it off again. <laughs> For Lomu tonight, look at it's when they're going between the center and the guard or the guard and the tackle, a lot of the times, it's not just them powering through. A lot of times, it's them with a wide open hole. And they're not met until you get into that, that second part, until you get into the linebackers, until you get into the secondary. So it's it's just another one of those instances we've seen multiple times. First and 10, hand it off to Jake. It's up the middle. He's got room to go. Breaks a couple tackles and gets knocked out of bounds. And even when, like you're saying, when they're running eight, it just right up the middle, it Takes a minute for any Thunder player even to get mitts on him. This time it was Cummings. He spun off him and was able to get another, or close to, inches away from another first down inside the 10-yard line. That only adds to the power of these running backs. When you're able to get five yards to gather yourself, collect all power behind and push forward, it's not a I'm met at the line, I have to find a way to power through. They're carrying momentum right now. Will they go to Jen Jenkins again here on second and short, or will they go to the air? We'll see. Thompson takes it. No, they're just going to hand it right up to Jenkins, but he's stuffed. Talking about the A-gap, that time it was clogged up by the Desert Hills defense. That's Lou getting in there. Had an interception against Brighton. Watch him bust on through right here. You're not escaping that tackle. And, uh, well, yeah, and honestly, too, on top of that, this is the same area we saw Desert Hills start to apply a little pressure when they forced that turnover only a little while ago. So, Maybe we're, maybe we're seeing a little bit of the same thing. Third and two coming up here for the Aviators. The Thunder were able to s stiffen up last yeah. possession and create a turnover and hoping to do something similar here. Here comes Thompson. He's under center, and now we're going to have a timeout by Cedar Valley before the play. We'll go ahead and take it. We'll take a 45 second break, but we'll be back with a huge third and two coming up right here on ESPN 97.7. Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Beyond the park you know exists a world you don't. A world that is greater greater than just one passion, greater than just one adventure, greater than just one moment. Come to where life is greater. Come to Greater Zion. Welcome back, third and two coming up for the Aviators here inside the red zone. On the 10 yard line, third and two. Handoff goes up the middle to Jenkins. Once again, he's stuffed. This time, Polu, the linebacker, in the backfield. And he'll stop him short of the line again. And it'll be fourth down coming up for Cedar Valley. How about the defensive stand once again by the Thunder? Getting in the backfield that time. 
and and even coming off the timeout, previously they were giving them a similar look to what extended the drive earlier when they had Fisher in the fullback spot. The timeout happens, Desert Hills comes out mentally ready, able to get that stop. And for the Aviators, looks like they're in four down territory, no field goal attempt for them. Didn't kick a field goal last week, or at least didn't make a field goal. Fourth and short, they'll go I formation with Fisher as a lead blocker. We'll see if they'll just go ISO right up the middle to Jacobs here. Now they'll give it to the fullback. Fisher has plenty of room, breaks the tackle, tries to stay on his feet. He crosses the goal line, touchdown on fourth and one by the Aviators. And a lot of that, yeah, I give credit, I've been talking about the offensive line, but just pure hustle from Fisher. We said it earlier, it extended a drive earlier in this game. This time he gets it in a similar spot. Instead of picking up the first, he says, I'm going to go all the way. Just great push from number six, K.J. Fisher, his first touchdown of the night. Desert Hills had done a tremendous job with their gap control defensively the last couple plays by that time. Quick hit to the fullback, and he, Herculean effort there by Fisher, to bully his way into the end zone and give the Aviators the 13 to zero lead down 14 after the PAT on our We Win Injury Law scoreboard. Cedar Valley leads Desert Hills 14-0 with 6.31 left here in the second quarter. We'll be right back on ESPN 97.7. Ernie's Two Sinclair Stations want to wish Region 10 athletes the best of luck this season. And stay tuned for the Ernie's Player of the Game. Don't forget to grab an Ernie's Reward Card that allows you to save on fuel and earn points for every dollar spent in store. Get your card today. Ernie's, St. George, Hurricane, Cedar, and in Beaver. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad. That's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Welcome back, Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson with you here on ESPN as well as SportsRadio977.com, CEC-TV, and we've got a little bit of a surprise brewing here at Desert Hills, the way Cedar Valley has been able to run the ball. They lead 14 to zero. Line drive kick fielded by Desert Hills. And nice aggressive return, barely avoided putting his knee on the ground. Ashton Carnley brings it out and a nice return there for the Thunder. What do you want to see from Desert Hills on this drive? I, I feel like we've got a decent amount of all sorts of different looks but none necessarily that have, have really proven to be your go-to type situation. Any, any particular moves you want to see here, AT? I've just been surprised at how little Tyden Morris yeah. has gotten opportunities on zone runs. Maybe they're trying to preserve him a little bit as Cummings comes across the formation. No, there's Morris. He gets a run and gets tangled up, but not before he gets about five yards there on first down. For the Thunder. I don't have the stats in front of me right now, but I would guess tonight, and we keep saying, well, where's Tide Morris? Where's Tide Morris? When Tide Morris has gotten the ball, the Aviators have done a good job containing yeah, him. That right. was probably his biggest run of tonight's ball game up to this point. Absolutely. Second and four. Here comes Tide again, and he is fighting. The ball comes out, but no, they're saying his progress was stopped or he was down. And once again, Aviators doing a good job containing number one. Let's uh, let's have counting right here with Rustin Burnside. One, two, three, four, five, five white jerseys around Morris. They're just getting to the ball carrier at a rapid pace and see what they draw up here on third. And it was a whistle forward progress stopped call. That's why no fumble and Ooh. throw it out to Tyden Morris and once again kind of looking ahead before he caught the ball. That's happened twice tonight and that was a big third down. Would have been a first down had they been able to make that completion. Instead falls to the turf and another fourth down coming up for the Thunder. Best look of the night in the passing game for Desert Hills. Morris would have had room to churn and burn. Fourth and two. They're going for it. Thunder. Hard snap and Got the him. Aviators commit the cardinal sin and jump into the neutral zone as it was clear that Desert Hills was going to attempt to do that before running a play, and then maybe they wouldn't have run a play at all. Instead, they get the 
Automatic Fabulous Freddy's first down on a heady play there by the Thunder. And, and right now, too, Desert Hills, uncharacteristically, we, we've talked about some of those things going on. But for Morris, you talk about his run game last week, 134 yards, 7.4 yeah. average. He also had five catches for 47 yards. He can do that. Wall looking to throw on the out route. He throws an interception right into the hands of Hansen, who's at the 20, the 10, pick six for the Aviators. And what a play on the ball by who else taking Hansen, who has been the star of the game defensively for Cedar Valley. Eight tackles last week. He's been active tonight. How about an interception and the reward for taking it to the house? Right around a 60-yard interception return score for Cedar Valley, who cracks this thing open 20 to zero. Amazing. After giving up the first down on an encroachment call and a pick six to Hansen, who has had great instincts all over in the defensive secondary all game long, and now we got a flag. And we're going to have an offsides penalty against Desert Hills, which means nothing. But, uh, wow, Cedar Valley playing with their hair on fire early in this one on the road. And this, this is a, a learning stage, right? We don't want to speculate. That's not our job. That's not what we're here to do. But we don't know how long the Thunder are going to be without Fui. Uh, and, and we don't know how long as the extra point is up and through by Holman. We don't know what they're going to deal with this year, but they're projected to be number one. They have the pieces around despite the quarterback issues. So uh, tonight's an interesting game from that perspective. We'll keep it right here. Appreciate all of our sponsors. Stay tuned at the end of the game, of course, for, as always, the Ernie's Two Sinclair Station player of the game. And right now it's all Cedar Valley. Also appreciate Ideal Home and Paint. Our title sponsor this year for all Region 10 Athletics. You can check them out at 4096 South River Road for all your home improvement needs. Ideal has that. And I think the Thunder Faithful are in a bit of shock right now as coming into this game, the favorite team, especially after their week one win over Bright. But Cedar Valley, this is a new team from last year, clearly. It is, and I know we're talking about the quarterback spot, but I can't help but feel even if Desert Hills had a, a healthy offense right now, that's not – I mean, the pick six definitely hurts, but there's a little bit more to this game. And ball kicked into the end zone for a touchback. And we'll see if Desert Hills can put it to – Put a drive together here in the second quarter with five minutes and 12 seconds left in the second quarter and trailing 21-0 to Cedar Valley. The Aviators have done a great job, like we were saying, against the featured back of the Thunder, Titan Morris. Hasn't got a ton of carries, but they've held him relatively contained. And then the throw game for the Thunder has been, I was going to say hit and miss, but it really hasn't hit very much at all tonight. Here's the jet sweep to Holmes. This has worked over and over again. He gets the edge. Great mm. block on the outside. And he's going to get a fabulous Freddy's first down and about 15 yards more. That was Kona. That had to be Kona with that block, I believe. And there is a flag in the Desert Hills backfield. And I can see Kona over there. He kind of waves it off. Kind of takes that left hand and just says, yeah, whatever. We'll get the replay here in a sec after the call, but... Yeah. There's the hold against Desert Hills, number 51. So it wasn't on any of the receivers. It was on, yeah, and Kona did a great job coming out, clearing the way right here. Just a oh, wow. great block. And it's, it's I mean, just as, as much as the Thunder have struggled so far in this game, they really haven't done themselves any favors. I missed the, I missed the hold because I saw Stuart Taffa pancake a guy and I don't know if he grabbed his jersey beforehand before he pancaked him but I think they called it on him the yeah 51 yeah first and a mile here for Desert Hills wall throwing it deep he's got Cummings waiting for it 50 50 ball luckily Cummings played defender a little bit there and got a hand on it made it hard for the defender 
Rodriguez to make an interception. And Rodriguez has his eyes on this ball the whole way. It's not your typical cornerback defensive possession where you're wondering where the ball's at. I just got to stay by my receiver. He was watching that the entire time. And uh, Cummings just kind of had to come over and compete for it and knock it down. And we know Cummings can win those one-on-one -on -one balls, but that's a tough one to win. Second and 20 for Desert Hills. 4.59 here in the second quarter. Here's the snap to Wall. Straight drop back. Looking to throw a little screen, and it's dropped once again. This time, Kona Kroll can't hold on to it. And the connection between Wall and his running backs tonight, I think that's three drops on plays like that. Yeah, Morris has a couple. Kroll with one right there, and Kona kind of hang his head, and he'd like to have that one back. And on third down, you're almost at the point where, especially with, with it being third and 20, you're not thinking about picking up the first down. You're thinking of getting out of your own end zone type situation. Third and 20, we'll see how aggressive they are here on this call. They've already used up their screen. We'll see if they do something like that again. Third and 20, here's the snap from Wall. He's running around. He's got room to run, but umbrella defense by the Aviators. They'll tackle him after just a short gain. And Desert Hills once again has to bring in the punt team. That was another great tackle from guess who? Number 14, Tegan Hansen. Had that pick six, house call. Right in there, he is definitely involved on bringing down Bo Wall. And here comes Polu to kick it away once again for Desert Hills. And we'll see if Jenkins has an opportunity to return the punt flag on the play near the line of scrimmage. Ball bounces and is caught by Desert Hills right around the 41-yard line. And we'll see what DeLaundry is on the field as the referees consult. Thanks for being with us. Stay tuned for our Bucks Ace Hardware halftime show. Coming up here shortly. 21-0. Cedar Valley with the lead over Desert Hills with 4-12 left on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard. Trying to get you some updates from around Region 10 in the halftime show as going to be a illegal formation on Desert Hills. It'll be tacked on to where the ball was down, and Cedar Valley will have a few more yards before they start this possession. Of course, over on our sister station, 92.5 FM, 890 AM KDXU, you can listen to S Crimson Cliffs as they host Spanish Fork tonight. Dixie is at home taking on Riverton. What do you got there, Burns? Oh, right now it looks like per Deseret News, Riverton with a 10-7 lead. This was a 16-13 game yeah. last year, kind of having that uh, familiar type vibe right now. First and 10, here's Thompson. Twins to either side. Hands it to Lomu up the middle, who is tackled after about a gain of four by Kroll. He's been active tonight. I, I know there, it's easy to sit back and look at, you know, what hasn't gone right for Desert Hills, but Kona's been hustling out there, and that's just his type of personality, whether it's on the offensive, defensive side. Number 22, you won't ever catch him sleeping on any given play. Put a big hit on the hip of the runner there. Put him down short of really what's been the yards per rush tonight for Cedar Valley. I'd probably put it up around five yards and stop them there for four yards. Here's Thompson. Maybe even more than five yards. Thompson hands it off again. This time, stretch play outside. And it's going to be right around the first down marker for Lomu. And they're going to give it to him. Fabulous Freddy's first down for the Aviators on the second down run. Watch this collision. Great replay courtesy of CEC TV. But Lomu, Tuckness. Lomu throws a nasty arm into the chest of Tuckness, and he's able to hang on. Not an easy tackle to make. And we'll see how aggressive or risk-taking Desert Hills is on this drive with just three minutes left here in the second quarter. First and 10, Desert Hills sends four. Here comes Jenkins, runs into the teeth of the defense. Nice job there by D. Hills. Uh, I saw, saw Lou in there, I saw Ocean Taffa in there, I saw multiple different Thunder players Looked like Lou had the initial hit, and also coming in to help was big number 75, Bridger Fleming. But well, still a decent game there on first down. Uh, Nick 
to Akoy, the big number 64, their left guard for the Aviators. He's always got a hat on somebody's second level, and he's making it very difficult on the linebacker crew here for the Thunder tonight. Here's a fake to Jenkins. Thompson going to keep it on that left side, sprints out of bounds, and short of the first down. Didn't expect the keeper right there because we haven't seen him do it all game. Not not once, and even his statistics last week in the win over Copper Hills, he had three r carries for negative four yards, uh, and that's just a byproduct of being a, a quarterback sometimes. But uh, great play call there to make it a more manageable third down for the Aviators and for Desert Hills. They uh, You got this feeling right now that they really, really need to create a stop. They can't allow Cedar Valley to go in 28 nothing. Third and two, here's Thompson. Hand off up the middle of the He easily gets the fabulous Freddy's first down, just running it right up the gut for Cedar Valley. And 2.07 on the clock here in the second quarter. Cedar Valley with the three score lead over the Thunder. Great push, and we're kind of shouting out the linemen for Cedar Valley because they've done such a great job right there in the thick of it was uh, Alama Fatua. He did a really good job getting a hat on somebody and creating a little extra wiggle room to set up a fresh set of downs. First and 10, Cedar Valley being patient. Plenty of time here in Desert Hills territory. Thompson motions a man over, that's Fisher. He'll hand it outside to Lomo. He'll cut it up off tackle, runs over a Thunder player, stays on his feet and gets about four or five yards again, Rustin. Just pure rage. I, I mean, not even rage. <laughs> I don't know how to describe the running style that these Aviator running backs have came in with. And we talked about them being a balanced team um, in terms of pass versus run ratio. They're comfortable with both. They're willing to go with whatever's working for them. And tonight there's there's been little reason to not go to the run game. Bunch trips to the left. They'll motion Fisher out as the wide receiver and they'll give it right up the middle to Jenkins who runs up the middle and gets Enough for a fabulous Freddy's first down, and that clock will stop at 53 seconds until the whistle blows. Getting a good look at Cedar Valley's helmets right now. I know this is off topic, but those are good looking <laughs> helmets, man. Almost a incidental face mask there, but no call. First and 10 for the Aviators. Thompson takes the snap, 41 seconds. He's looking to throw. He gets hit mid throw and thrown down to the ground and a flag thrown by the lead official. And it's uh, Thompson was thrown down a little late, but the flag seemed to be thrown yep. away from that. Yep. So I, I don't think that's what we're going to see here. Davis Olsen bringing the heat, putting the hit on Thompson. And we'll see the officials chatting about exactly what happened on the offensive line here. And it looks like it's going to be a hold against the Aviators. Legal shift. And they'll take the bigger of the two penalties. Desert Hills will, and it'll move the Aviators back about 10 yards. And we'll see the replay here, see if we can spot what went down. I think we see a hold there probably on the left side. That's a big that's a big play right there for Desert Hills defense with 37.4 yeah. seconds. I mean, they're not in field goal range. Even if they wanted to kick one, you have an opportunity to hold them right here headed into the second half. Here we go. First and long, but the clock is not the friend of the Aviators right now. Just 37 seconds. They're looking to run it, but the ball is blown dead. Flag from the side judge. And it'll be another procedure penalty. And it'll go five yards back for the Aviators. And I think the clock should resume on the whistle with 36 seconds left on our, and they'll add a second, but 37 seconds down our We Went Injury Law scoreboard. First and 25, and here's the snap. Looking to throw high from Thompson. 
Incomplete pass, clock will stop with 33.9 on the clock. Look at Ocean come in right here. Ocean Taffa comes in, gets hands on the quarterback. He Not only did he provide the pressure, but to see Thompson on the ground in the game of football, I know there was no sack there. It was just an incomplete pass. But if you can even just make him feel the tiniest bit rattled, that's, that's what you're going to want to do if you're Desert Hills because he's playing great. The running backs are playing great. So if you can just get in the head of one guy, one guy right now could slowly start to turn things in the other direction. But – all credit to Cedar Valley. They haven't they haven't necessarily looked rattled many times tonight. Second and super long for Cedar Valley out of their comfort zone here. And they're going to fake the handoff and then throw a tunnel screen inside to Hansen. Big hit coming up. Flag on the play about where the ball was caught. But was that who came up and made that hit? Was that Hunter Clark? Uh, that was. Or was that T-Money? Man, I'm trying to get a good look at it again. A nice executed tell. play. I like it. Yeah, the lineman was too far ahead when the ball was released, and it'll negate a, I think, a really good call to get the ball to take Hansen in this situation. Yeah, Michael Orr was way out ahead of the throw. And they're going to mark it off from, put it at the 32-yard line. What did I miss, Rustin? I'm not entirely sure. I'm trying to figure out what I missed. And I, I think the officials are trying to figure out <laughs> what, what they got going on as well. So we have a stoppage here. All right. Said a few words. They'll all back up to their spots with 16.5 seconds on the clock. And they're going to give the time a couple more seconds on the clock. So it'll be third, still third and long. And if you're Cedar Valley, do you take a big shot right here? And they must have waved off the penalty because the receiver caught it before the line of scrimmage maybe. Here's Thompson. Throwing it down the field and great coverage on that left side by Tuckness. And the ball is incomplete. A really good job of Tuckness right here in a situation against somebody in Ethan Johnson who's had a good ball game. And Tuckness reads it the whole way, keeps him on the sideline. There's no move he can make. There's nothing he can do. And that ball falls helplessly incomplete. And uh, well, I have a field goal. We got a field goal attempt right here. Which, uh, based on Holman, I don't think he uh, – I know he didn't make a field goal last week. I'm not sure if he attempted one. Amazing. Hey, must trust his, his opportunity here to maybe boot in a, about a 49-yarder. He's been great on extra eight points. Years. Here's the snap. Good snap. It's a kick in it, and well short. It will be fielded in the end zone, and he's not going to be able to take it out of the end zone. Otherwise, Holmes would have taken off Auburn style for a potential kick six. Unfortunately for Desert Hills, nope, that's going to be placed down at the 20-yard line with 3.4 seconds left. They'll probably just kneel on it and head into the locker room. And that worked out well for the Thunder. I mean, good defensive position. They, they were aided by a couple penalty flags here and there, but a three-score game is a, doesn't take a mathematician to know that is that it's a very different game than a 28 point game. So uh, you'll you'll take the 21 deficit. And they'll just hand it off to Tide Morris, who's got space, his biggest run so far of the night. Attempts to jump over a defender, lands awkwardly, but hops right back up and that'll be the first half. Great effort there by Tide. 21-0 Cedar Valley as we get a replay on the run. For a second, I thought he might've pulled an Antonio Brown. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> With the way that leg kicked out. The way he landed on that knee. Was, I don't like it. Yeah, that did not look good. I like good. the hustle. I didn't like the landing. But, uh, yeah, excellent effort. 21 zip, Rustin. Cedar Valley with the big lead here as the underdog at Desert Hills High School. Let's take a four-minute break. We'll be back with the Bucks Ace Hardware Halftime Show right after this. 
Fabulous Freddy's is the local's choice for a full-service car wash. It's fast. Have your car washed in just 20 minutes or less. Fabulous Freddy's always keeps it clean inside and out with two Southern Utah locations as well as in Vegas, Lehigh, and Sandy. Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder. Space to connect. Space to imagine. Space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. Ideal Home and Paint. Ideal has all the top quality brands like PPG, Pratt & Lambert, and Cimarron Floor Epoxy Coatings. Ideal has that. Check out their Paint Design Center, 4096 South River Road, or call 656-0801. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Do you know who I am? Julia. Hi. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls in eighth grade. Oh, yeah. That one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me because like I finally like knew that I had somebody. This is Tyler from We Win Injury Law. We win for you, period. If you have been in a motorcycle accident, car accident, hit by a semi-truck, or bitten by a dog, we will fight and win for you, period. Visit 435wewin.com to have me look at your case. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey. Jessica, I, uh, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. I take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine, pouring on me, think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me, sun is gonna shine. Welcome back. Bucks Ace Hardware Halftime Show. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson. Cedar Valley leads the Thunder 21-0 in what was a dominating performance running the football for the Aviators. Um, Burns, give me your reaction to the score before we get into some updates as well as looking at some highlights from the first half. 
Yeah, I, I ultimately think right now that this game, we, we talked about the quarterback position and how Bo Wall has had to kind of get comfortable with his receivers, okay? We, we know that was a focus. He had that interception that was returned to the house. We can, we can look past that, but there's also the aspect of him connecting with his running backs, and I think that's what's really hurt his ability to settle into this game is because the running back position is so essential to helping the quarterback feel comfortable. And, he, and they haven't really been on the same page in terms of handoffs. We saw that fumble that was lost. All right. And then we've also seen even just these passes out of the backfield, the Titan, the Kona, whatever it may be, something isn't quite clicking there right now. So I, I think if you can get those running backs and your quarterback on the same page, I think it immediately lifts a massive weight off of Bo Wall's shoulders. Also on top of that, uh, take away the quarterback position, period, and you, you've put Fui back in, Desert Hills is healthy. This game isn't really about that. This game is the way that Cedar Valley has took control within the trenches where, where the big boys play, and that's exactly the way that the offensive line has got off and pushed, the way that the defensive line has kind of created some havoc back there. It's been pretty crazy to watch. So that that ultimately, that's the two things, getting comfortable one way or another, and uh, also on top of that, getting your quarterback comfortable, but also being able to get a bit more push on this aviator offensive line because they're controlling the ball game at the moment. All right, let's roll the uh, highlights of the first half here in our Bucks Ace Hardware halftime show. As we see Zach Ford, who was so fun to watch, and electric. This was the first series of the game, and he got the first down there. And then a swing pass outside, and a nice tackle made by Cummings. And the stretch play, really, that was the, the play for Desert Hills that yeah. kind of was consistent for him, whether it was Holmes or Ford. Getting around that edge for 7, 8, 15 yards sometimes was uh, – was Desert Hills' bread and butter as we see Jenkins just as small. And that's that's the perfect highlight of this game, just watching the running back go to work, run over guys here. He's been physical tonight, but that nasty cut to get into the end zone, this was the first score of the ball game, making it 7-0 in favor of the Aviators. Jenkins again going to work. Polu meets him. Doesn't matter. He continues to stand upright. Three Thunder players around him. Here is the interception, though. With a little bit of pressure, first pressure, Desert Hills got all game, team money. He's a ball hawk, didn't have to be a ball hawk there. Ball went right to him, and here's one of the big runs of the game from number 44, Lomu. He's been great. Jenkins has been great. Here's Jenkins again. You're going to see a lot of Cedar Valley running backs in this highlight reel, and it's only halftime, number four. And how about not a running back? How about the fullback, K.J. Yeah. Fisher? He picked up a first down from that same spot. This time he decides to take it all the way. Yeah, Fisher was a stud as a fullback, and then this guy was the stud of the game, in my opinion, so far. Tegan Hansen with a pick six. He's making tackles, he is making pass breakups, he's getting attempts on the offensive side of the ball. Here's Lomu, Lauren in a shoulder, leveling the boom. These are tough runners for Cedar Valley. They really are, and it, does, and it helps that they have five yards to get their momentum because of how clean the holes have been tonight. There's some pressure. Thompson had to just throw that ball away as Desert Hills got pursued from behind. And this, right before we went to halftime, Titan Morris channeling his inner uh, player, Antonio Brown, and <laughs> going for the hurdle, kind of kicked out a little bit. We love it. We, we wanted to see that hustle. Morris has been itching to break through. Every time he's got a carry, every time he's dropped a pass, he's just been beating himself up because he knows how much this team is, is really relying on him, especially with the new quarterback, and we know how good he is. We saw it against Brighton, so right there, he just went for something a little extra to try to make something happen. I expect a big second half from number one for the Thunder. All right, that's Rustin Burnside. I'm Andy Thompson. Thanks for being with us. Ideal home and paint game of the night. Desert Hills in a hole here in the first half, zero points scored. They trail 21 zip. We're going to take another four minute break. We'll be back with the second half right here on ESPN 97.7. Since 1946, Wilkinson's House of Lighting has been a fan of all Southern Utah high school sports. These are special kids. Help us celebrate these young men and women and all the student athletes by getting out to the games and cheering them on. From Wilkinson's House of Lighting. <laughs> yeah! Sam, Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia! Are you ready to play band with us? I'm gonna play my clarinet. And Elmo's gonna play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. 
<laughs> Play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Beyond the park you know exists a world you don't. A world that is greater greater than just one passion, greater than just one adventure, greater than just one moment. Come to where life is greater. Come to Greater Zion. Ernie's two Sinclair stations want to wish Region 10 athletes the best of luck this season. And stay tuned for the Ernie's player of the game. Don't forget to grab an Ernie's reward card that allows you to save on fuel and earn points for every dollar spent in store. Get your card today. Ernie's, St. George, Hurricane, Cedar, Inn, and Beaver. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, uh, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Fabulous Freddy's is the local's choice for a full-service car wash. It's fast. Have your car washed in just 20 minutes or less. Fabulous Freddy's always keeps it clean inside and out with two Southern Utah locations as well as in Vegas, Lehigh, and Sandy. Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder. Space to connect. Space to imagine space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. I take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, sunshine pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is going to shine on me. Sun is going to shine. Sunshine shining, sunshine pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Welcome back. Bucks A's Hardware Halftime Show. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson. Let's give some updates, Rustin, from around Region 10. There has been lightning in southern Utah, so some of these games have been delayed. But what do we know uh, of what's being reported thus far? Well, we did have a lightning delay out there at Crimson Cliffs for just a moment, but that game is rocking and rolling. Mason Tabellian got things rolling for the Mustangs. 93 yards for a score. In the first quarter, at the end of one, it was Crimson Cliff 7, Spanish Fork 0. Still, Barbin hit Jordan Eaton, the basketball star, for making his name known on the football field, 78 yards in the second to make it 14 nothing. But Spanish Fork has since scored for the Dons. It was a run by Will Dart for 16 yards and a touchdown. So Crimson Cliff's 14, Spanish Fork 6 last we saw. Well, actually, the extra point was good. So 7 for Spanish Fork. Yeah, I mean – we remember watching Jordan on the hardwood thinking, man, that guy is a tight end. I mean, he is physical, tough, and took one 
to the house from distance, 78 yards. Wow. And how about that Crimson Cliffs defense continuing to stifle people? Yeah, Spanish Fort coming off a game where they only put up 10 in that tight fought battle against the Cedar Reds. They finally get into the end zone in this game against the Mustangs, but the Mustangs offense rolling tonight, unlike it was in that week one victory over Green Canyon. So welcome signs right there for Crimson High. That's going to be an interesting second half to keep an eye on out there and then also across region 10 at yeah. riverton and dixie were locked in a tight one you got the silver wolves and you can't just be the wolves anymore green canyon is the wolves yeah. but we got a couple what two teams in utah that are silver the wolves that are the silver wolves i think wolves? fremont is the silver wolves as well and timpanogos is the timber wolves so i yeah. mean maybe it's cool just to be standard regular wolves <laughs> anymore i don't know how that one's working but last we saw it was riverton 13 and dixie was sitting at seven and it's still 13 seven out there at dixie high in a game that if it's anything like last year it's going to come down to the wire it's certainly looking that way right now cedar hosting the Wasps of Juab. That game was lightning delayed. Don't think they've been. They're back out now, but I don't think they've kicked that game off right. yet. And uh, what's the uh, what's the other one I'm missing? Let's see, Hurricane oh, Moapa Valley. Yeah, the, the game's out in Nevada, of yep. course. Hurricane and Moapa Valley, no score to report on that one yet. But we do know that Arborview and the Snow Canyon Warriors are at half and it is a 0-0 game right there against the big Nevada school. We'll let you know as soon as we find a Tigers score. But Snow Canyon and Arborview, they're going at it with uh, neither with a score quite yet. All right, 21 zip here. Cedar Valley with the lead over Desert Hills. Thanks for being with us, our ideal home and paint game of the night. Appreciate Bucks Ace Hardware help, helping us bring you the halftime show. And we'll keep you posted on all those Region 10 scores as Desert Hills desperate to get up on the board ah, tonight. What do got, you got a score. Got a score. Hurricane is zero. Moapa Valley 13. Lossy with a touchdown run for the Moapa Valley Pirates, making it 13-0. One minute, 39 seconds left in the first quarter. All right, there you go. Hurricane yet to get on, uh, get a point scored this year. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing them in person because I know they got a new young quarterback, but they do have some weapons and just kind of got to get in sync, it sounds like, offensively. All right, Rustin, what do you want to see from Desert Hills to start the second half in a big hole here, down 21 points? I just want to see pressure in, in any way, in any form. The issue with pressure is you're always worried about giving up the big score. Right now, though, the, the most positive thing you've had from an offensive perspective has been courtesy of the defense, and that was when you put some pressure on Thompson. He threw that pick to Mortensen, and it, it gave Desert Hills a little bit of a new life there. So I know you're worried about giving the, up the big play, and in a three-score game, maybe it's too early to start worrying about whether it breaks open or not. Uh, but at the same time, something has to change because – the Aviators offense, it's rolling. The, the run game is rolling, and that has led to the passing game being easy and accessible right now for the Aviators. So I just want to see pressure in, in any way, any form, whether it ends up being a, a negative for Desert Hills. You, you have to live with that because something needs to be shaken up right here. All right, here we go. We're ready to kick it off. Tristan John will do the honors for Desert Hills as Cedar Valley has the luxury of getting the ball to start the second half. Here's the kick, and it's a good one, and it is going to be a touchback. Jenkins is wanting to return that one. And it, it is a luxury in high school football to have a kicker who can get that thing into the end zone and make teams start yeah. at their 20 consistently. So you'll take that any time. And we talk about that pressure. Don't get me wrong, we're, we're not being harsh on Desert Hills per se. It's what has to happen, and we know that this Thunder group can do it. They did it against Brighton, and Brighton is a very, very good football team. They did it on the road, so I'm really excited to see what changes are made here on the defensive side for the Thunder, especially with uh, especially with the run game moving, moving as smoothly as it has for Cedar Valley. Thompson takes the snap, hands it to Jenkins. Zone left run, and it's Stopped after just a few yards. Kroll with the tackle. And big number 64 out there. Watch 
Watch 64 kind of trying to take on Lou. Gets Lou spun around for a second. Just another prop right there to the Va Cedar Valley's linemen and the job they've done tonight. That's uh, Nick Takoy. He's been great. This whole offensive line, like they've we all, keep saying, man. They, they, great. Keep, they keep you engaged, and it's hard to get off blocks from the Aviators on run plays. Here's the snap. Up to Lomu again, up the middle. Actually, his, excuse me, his first carry of the second half, but he'll get enough for a fabulous Freddy's first down. And once again, just inside zone, and you're counting on your offensive lineman to scrape off one defender, get second level, and create room for Lomu, who is, has great vision too, Rustin. I mean, we're giving a lot of credit to the offensive line, but these running backs are patient. Yeah, they find they a are. seam, and they explode through it. And that, that's the thing. It's one thing if you have a great offensive line and you're just going guns blazing every time, it can get you into trouble. But these guys have no hesitation to hesitate, as cheesy as that sounds. Like, they're okay with waiting and letting things come to them and seeing where the defender gets turned around or if they do. And you know, do I need to cut left? Do I need to cut right? First and 10 for Thompson. Hands it to Lomu up the middle. Nice defensive play made by Desert Hills. That's the big fella. There is a flag on the play, but that was Tamatasi Sata. We'll see what that what that flag is. But he's had a great game tonight. Your guy, A.T. Yeah. Tamatasi Viliami Sauta. That's, we've called his name a couple times tonight. And every time with a different pronunciation. You're bound to get one right. Penalty will go against Cedar Valley. And the ball will go to about the 20-yard line. The Aviators close that half with a string of penalties. So if you're Desert Hills right now, you got to take advantage of that and see if you can still get in their head a little bit. First down, 20 yards to go for the Aviators. Thompson looking at the throw, post pattern, well defended by Desert Hills, knocked away. And how about Tuckness? Remember, Tuckness went down in the first quarter, tail end of the first quarter, I believe it was, with an injury where he kind of stumbled back and ended up falling down, ended up walking off under his own power. He's came back in the game, and he has been a force defensively. A lot of pass breakups for him. He's very active when it comes to tackling the ball carrier, not afraid to get in and get his hands dirty in that regard. He's had a big game so far. Second down and long for the Aviators. And they've been kind of in this situation the last couple possessions where they got to throw because it's such a long down and distance. They'll throw a screen out to Jenkins. He catches it, cuts back middle, gets a good block. Jukes has room on the sideline and gets about 17, 18 yards and will make it third and very gettable here for this team as Jenkins comes up a little bit lame as he scoots off the field. Watch this block here on the sideline to give him a little extra room right here. Coming in and putting Mortensen on the ground allows him to just get that extra yardage to uh, make it a manageable. And that's great hustle. Down. And the praise of the offensive line of the Aviators continues here, but on a screen pass, getting out and getting a hat on a safety. Uh, a great a, safety at that. Amazing job there by the Aviators offensive lineman. Third and two. Shotgun. Snap. Gives it to Lomu up the middle. He's hit hard, but he stumbles forward through contact and gets another fabulous Freddy's first down. Great effort by Desert Hills. I think that was... Kolu Afualu, who got into the backfield. But the backs don't go down. And they haven't throughout the night. There was that pressure. There was that penetration yeah. that we wanted. It's just the power ended up being a little too much there. But we're, we're seeing signs of life from the Thunder defense. The issue with this is it's been a very um, – Strive's been lasting quite some time. I mean, we're, we're already looking at nine minutes, 44 seconds. Yeah. Clock continues to tick. Cedar Valley's in no hurry. Here's Thompson in the shotgun. He's just going to hand it right off the middle. Good defense by Desert Hills that time by Lou controlling his gap and nowhere to go for Lomu. And let's not forget, the Aviators are coming off a game as we get a great look at that stop right inside there, courtesy of CCTV. That Copper Hills game, they were up 35 
to seven at one point. And then in the fourth, 28 points for Copper Hills made it a very tight ball game. So we're seeing the Aviators try to control this game in the second half after realizing that we nearly lost that first one after a huge lead. They have another huge lead when we're seeing how they're responding. Second and nine from the 44 yard line. Thompson throws out a bubble outside caught and good job putting his head down by Baker and getting a fabulous Freddy's first down. These guys know how to block. Cedar Valley does, and even on the outside, we've talked about the linemen. How about Isaac Klein and Fisher out there? You'll see Klein pushing on Clark. Allows Baker to get a couple extra yards there. And just a simple, you know, it's not like Thompson has set the world on fire throwing the ball tonight. Hey, he hasn't really had to. That time they put him in a situation, just throw out a quick hitter and let Baker make a play, and he did. First and 10 for Cedar Valley. Now on the thunder side of the field, handoff. All goes out on a stretch play. What a defensive stop by the Thunder. The big fella, Tegan Smith, as well as T Money Mortensen in the backfield to make a rare stop on Jenkins behind the line of scrimmage. Now watch here. The, the initial snap was bobbled a little bit. Jenkins finally gets it, and just great pursuit from the Thunder. Not one, but two players in black getting into that backfield. And, and that's a fresh, fre that's a breath of fresh air if you will. There's there's what I'm looking for for Desert Hills yeah. and the fans. Got a big, big cheer from this side. Reading a run play and going after it as Mortensen from the defensive secondary, maybe on a run blitz that time, getting into the backfield as well as Smith off from the defensive line. Second and long. And we got a whistle right after the snap. And we'll see here, maybe a procedure penalty. No, delay a game on the Aviators. They'll go back five yards. And Desert Hills, even though this drive is taking forever, Rustin, yeah. <laughs> is <laughs> seven minutes, 25 seconds. They're so playing with some energy, and the Aviators finding themselves once again in a second and long situation. The defense with some confidence. They got the Aviators backed into a tight spot. They have to hold strong. They can hold here. Hopefully that shifts some of that momentum and strength over the offense. And uh, you kind of rock and roll from there. But Second along for Thompson. Lomu in the backfield with him. He's going to straight drop back pass. Throws a five-yard out caught at about the 49-yard line of Desert Hills by Baker. And that will set up about a third and 13 for the Aviators. And don't, don't expect anything crazy here on this third down. Good look, Baker's been active tonight. On this third down though, because they're playing four down territory, they're okay with picking up seven yards here. They're okay with picking up six yards here. They're, they're most likely not going to try to get it past the sticks at this moment. We'll see the Thunder got three defensive linemen right there. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't look like they're planning on bringing too much pressure. We'll see. Yeah, third and 13, three-man front for the Thunder. Here's Thompson. Passing situation for the Aviators. Straight drop, looking for the cut in route. Knocked away by Polu, well covered by Holmes. A beautiful defensive stop there by the Thunder. Holmes was there, Polu was there. That's what we have been expecting tonight because they only send three. Thompson has a little bit of time, but by only sending three, they have the personnel to make a difference right there. Everybody reads it fantastically. They're in the right spot, right time, and they get the deflection. And, and if Desert Hills can put the Aviators in passing situations, the Aviators haven't be able, been able to hurt. It's been just runs right up the middle. Right. And it looks like maybe Desert Hills has made the adjustment to help out as the punt shanked and will take a bounce out of bounds at about the Desert Hills 38-yard line. Best starting position of the night, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. What I just said was obvious, Rustin. Obviously, you want the team to be in passing situations, but... Thompson hasn't been able yet, at least, to, to hurt you very much with throwing the ball down the field. And Desert Hills' defensive secondary has been excellent for the most part. And if they can continue to stop those runs early in the series, that'll be 
big for the Desert Hills comeback potentially. So the defense with some confidence. Let's see what the offense can draw up here. Hands it off, two back set. This one goes to Kroll, who bounces it outside. So quick with his shifty moves and gets about on a nine yard gain. And I like that look. I don't know that we've seen that with both Kroll and Tide Morris in the backfield there with Wall. And we've said this, there was a very similar play where this handoff wasn't handled, ended up in a fumble that time, a nine yard gain. They go to Tyden Morris, who tries to spin off and keep going forward, breaks the tackle, still on his feet somehow, but he won't gain any yardage. And it'll be third down now and about three after the loss. Morris's effort has been there all night. It always is every game. And he bounces off one, two, three guys. But Cedar Valley's pursuit too much. Tempo for Desert Hills gives it to Kona Kroll. And he bursts forward for what looks like a fabulous Freddy's first down there on third. Big conversion there for the Thunder. You love it, in particular right here for Kroll. Just kind of quick, it moved fast. Cedar Valley didn't really have time to set up the way they wanted to, I believe, and it allowed Kroll to push forward for just enough for the fabulous Freddy's first down. And Kroll's going to get a little breather. They'll go back to a one-back set with twins to either side of Wall. First and ten. Motion man. Gives it to Cummings around the left edge. Ooh. Huge block by Titan Morris. And Cummings gets the first down. And that crowd is on their feet here at Desert Hills after that play. They are alive and well here at D Hills High School. Crowd on their feet after that block. And man, that is definitely worth another watch. Watch this come in and just lower the boom. Whoo! And we've seen some great blocks tonight. Stretch play to Holmes. He's got room on the left side. He's going to cut it back up the middle. He's still on his feet. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Desert Hills. There is a flag at about the 18-yard line. And well, what an explosive play by Holmes as we anticipate a holding penalty or an illegal block potentially for Desert Hills, but two huge plays in a row if the touchdown stands here for the Thunder. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah, no. holding against the Thunder. And as Mortensen goes over to the official to plead his case, let's get a good look at it right here. Thanks to CEC TV for these great angles. You see Morris leading the way. Mortensen's downfield. Morris with the big block, blocks two guys. And I, it's... It's tough to tell, A.T. Yeah, Mortensen had him engaged on that left side and gets called for the hole. It'll be first and five after the play. Here's Ford. He's going to go around the edge. He's got Morris blocking for him. He's inside the 10-yard line all the way down to the seven, the micro machine. Zachary Ford with a big play. The speed that Ford possesses is absurd, and when he has room coming off that corner, you can bet he's going to pick up at least 10 yards just on speed alone. Morris once again peeled back and deck number 24, Travion Marshall, who he hit previously a couple plays ago. And, and right now for Titan, it's fantastic that even if the run game isn't working for you, you're still out there making an impact and making your name felt by blocking. Two back set, they go to Kroll. Kroll goes up the middle, stays on his feet. Touchdown, Desert Hills. They have life. Every, the defense got its legs back. The offense and the run game in particular now getting things done. We thought we had a Lincoln Holmes touchdown. They call it back. Desert Hills able to overcome that and get Kona Kroll into the end zone for the Thunder's first score tonight. How about the energy that drive for the Desert Hills offense after a couple big plays, some big hits, and they mm -hmm. are fired up. And I love that two-back set, Rustin, something we didn't see. What an adjustment by Desert Hills' offense after we saw a great adjustment defensively to stifle the run of Cedar Valley. We got ourselves a ball game with a kick up and good. 14 to seven on our We Win Injury Law scoreboard. We got life for the home team, 21-7 for Cedar Valley. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this on ESPN 97.7. 
Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Beyond the park you know exists a world you don't. A world that is greater greater than just one passion, greater than just one adventure, greater than just one moment. Come to where life is greater. Come to Greater Zion. Welcome back, Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson here with you on ESPN 97.7, CEC TV, Sports Radio 977.com. And signs alive from Desert Hills. What a drive to punch one into the end zone and make it a 14-point game. After stopping Cedar Valley, who got the ball to start the first half, took a bunch of time off the clock. Yes. But they were able to stop the run a little bit and force a punt. And they're going to try to do if something similar right now. If there's anything positive to, to all the time Cedar Valley took off the clock, it's that the offense was fresh after the defense did a good job. And the offense moved the ball relatively quickly. That was a quick score yeah. for the Thunder, all things considered. And now it shifts back to the defense in this two-possession game. And ultimately, I feel like Cedar Valley's got to be sweating a little bit in the sense that they just blew a 28-point lead last game and barely hung on. It's hard to not have those thoughts go through the back of your head in these types of situations. Here we go. First and 10, I formation, and once again, the run is stuffed in the backfield. Sauta, as well as Lou back there for the TFL. And he, that's the third, fourth time we've called his name tonight, busting through. And for all the good things that the Cedar Valley offensive line has done, there's the one spot where the Thunder have been able to have just a little bit of push, a little bit of penetration, and right now it's coming at a time where they need it most. Second and 12. Back to the shotgun for Thompson. Huge win there on first down for Desert Hills to put Cedar Valley in a passing situation. We'll see if they do, in fact, go to the air with Jenkins in the backfield. Here's the throw. Thompson, screen pass to the outside. Caught by Baker. Gets knocked out of bounds short of the first down by Kroll. But a nice bullet pass outside by Thompson. And right now, this is what the Aviators kind of need to calm down, just to, just to pass out to Baker. You know he's a, one of your speedsters. He can make things happen after the catch, and that's exactly what he does right there. Third and three, trips to the near side for Thompson. Snaps. We do have movement on the defensive line. Just a little flinch, and it will go, it looks like, against the Thunder, if I read the signal there properly to Gene Van Orden. No, they're gonna re-communicate and confirm with each other and then walk it over to Gene. And we'll have a encroachment penalty on D Hills. And it'll be a first down for Cedar Valley. Cedar Valley able to just pick up that first. They had that pass play to Thompson, which was great, or from Thompson to Baker, which was great. But, I mean, Desert Hills' defense has, has kind of flipped the script right now, and so a penalty like that, it, it certainly hurts. First and ten for the Aviators. Here's the handoff inside to Lomu. He's got space, bursts through, gets about eight on first down. Lomu's had a great game, and th this is a player who coming off that week one had three carries and seven yards, and tonight next to Jenkins, especially with Jenkins being a little rattled every so often, Lomu's come in and done a really good job spelling number four. And uh, I, I expect Cedar Valley, they wasted a lot of time on that first drive, just like they wanted to do, all a part of the plan. I expect them to continue to do so here on this drive as long as they can. And on second down, Thompson in the gun gets the snap, fakes the pass, ended up giving a low move, balls on the ground, and the Thunder have it. Second. Fumble recovery tonight for Desert Hills in Cedar Valley territory. 
And it just spurted out late in the play. And Lou, I think, was the one who came away with it for the Thunder. The third turnover for the Aviators. Yeah, Tofa. Ocean Tafa strips it. And Lou jumps on it. Another huge momentum swinging play potentially for the Thunder. And not only do they get the turnover, they've already had an interception where they got it in the in the opposition end zone, so they didn't get to really start with good field position. The other fumble recovery we had didn't really get to start with good field position. They get good field position right here, and they're coming off their best drive of the whole game still in the third quarter. Here's the handoff to Kroll up the middle. He's, he's running it hard, Rustin. He's scrapping for extra yardage. Gets about three yards. It doesn't matter if the score's been 14-0, 21-0, 21-7. Kona's been one of those players out there tonight for Desert Hills who has been incredibly active and high energy almost on every single play, offensively and defensively. This is a two-way guy, and there he tries to continue to push the pile. Still in that two running back set. Morris to the right, Kroll to the left. Here's the handoff to Ty Morris. He ducks out, goes outside, dodges a tackle. He's to the sideline, lowers his shoulder, Ooh. runs over a man, gets inside the 10, Tyden Morris. There it is, the play we've been waiting for from Tyden. He's he settled for a little bit there and said, I'm just going to block and create room for my teammates. Now he has the ability to make it happen himself. He has the speed to kick it to the outside and the power to mow over the defender. What a hit. And the Thunder in business. Moore has been a man possessed these last two possessions, and he wants pay dirt from the seven-yard line. Here's Wall. Fakes the handoff, throws it outside to Kroll. Kroll makes the catch, makes a move, makes another Ooh. move, then gets hit by Hansen inside the five-yard line and stopped at about the four. Good touchdown saving tackle from Hansen there because Kroll definitely put the moves. He had Nate Bannery kind of shook a little bit down there in that goal line situation. Good touchdown saving tackle from Hanson. Wow. 2 11 left here in the third quarter. Desert Hills trails 21-7. And we have a procedure penalty coming up for Desert Hills. No go against the Thunder. What did you see on that replay, Bernsey? Uh, just on that replay with going back to that Kroll catch, where Hanson ended up making the tackle, just that was that was really the first time this half we've seen them go to wall in the sense of just yeah. having him complete a pass. I think yeah. he's starting to get that communicate. The handoffs are better with the running backs. I f think he felt comfortable to do that right there. Second and goal, fakes the handoff, throws it outside to Polu. Polu spins off a defender, touchdown, Thunder. I love it. I love it because you have Bo Wall, the sophomore, getting the start tonight. He got off to a very slow start, was overthrowing guys. He threw that interception that was returned for his score. And ultimately, when the game is at its most intense, you go to him twice. You have him throw that pass to Kroll. I know they're nothing crazy, but this one, it wasn't a little dump off to the running back. This one, they say, get it to Polu, let him go to work, and he did just that. The confidence in the quarterback after the run game had been going so well. And the kick is up and good for the PAT. And the Thunder cut it to a one possession game, 21-7. Cedar Valley leads Desert Hills. Two minutes left in the third quarter on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard. We'll be back on ESPN 97.7. Ernie's 2 Sinclair Stations want to wish Region 10 athletes the best of luck this season. And stay tuned for the Ernie's Player of the Game. Don't forget to grab an Ernie's Reward Card that allows you to save on fuel and earn points for every dollar spent in store. Get your card today. Ernie's, St. George, Hurricane, Cedar, and in Beaver. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. What a turn of events and a momentum switch here in the second half as Desert Hills gets another one into the end zone. Beautifully executed play from Bo Wall to Cyrus Polu for the touchdown. Cuts it to a seven-point game. Cedar Valley leads 
And it, it goes back to having confidence in the quarterback and, and realizing that, yeah, you didn't get off to a great first start, but you're here for a reason. And we'll forget that first half. We'll let you go to Cyrus. Those were his first two pass attempts of the half, if I, if I remember correctly. The other previous drive where Desert Hill scored, it was simply the run game working and churning and burning. And that score was set up by Tyden Morris in a fantastic run where he absolutely delivered the boom on an opposing cornerback. But still got to give credit for them going back to Wall. Here comes Thompson under center. He's going to hand it to the fullback. And he is stopped after a couple yards. And it, it, there's just been a change defensively yes. against the run by Desert Hills getting to those plays at the line of scrimmage instead of four yards down past the line of scrimmage. Well, and I think it's a situation where Desert Hills had said, we're not going to let the run beat us anymore. We're going to stop the run. We're going to make Thompson beat us through the air. And right now, Thompson really hasn't looked downfield other than, you know, five, six, seven yeah. yards. So uh, that's boating well in Desert Hills' favor. I don't know if they'll continue to do that, but they're definitely shifting the focus right now to, to making number 12 air it out a little bit, and it's aided the Thunder. Here we go, second and seven for Thompson. He moves his running back from left to right. Takes the snap, looking to the throw. Over the middle, ball gets tipped up and then falls to the turf, was trying to hit Hanson. And now it'll be another third down for this Desert Hills defense. Thompson backpedaled for quite some time, delivered a strike. I don't think he really liked anything that he saw, but that was the closest thing to, to really being open and it just was not hauled in. And even if it would have been, the defender was in such great position, it probably wouldn't have resulted in much. So big third down, fans are stomping. This feels important, AT. Third down, Bell chimes here at Thunderfield. Thompson from the shotgun, takes the snap, straight drop back, looking down the middle, throws a corner out. Hansen comes wide open and makes the catch. Fabulous Freddy's first down for the Aviators. And Hanson, just a great route ran. We knew that Hanson and, and Thompson were going to have a connection here. And really, he's been the feature receiver tonight. I know Fisher has a score from the fullback spot, but Hanson's been the guy on defense, on offense, comes up with a big grab to move the chains and eat some more clock. First and 10. Here we go. Thompson trips to the near side. Takes the snap, hands it up the middle of the Jenkins, and right at the line of scrimmage, he is stacked up by the Thunder D. It's fair to say that it's not the run game anymore, right? Cedar Valley is moving the football this half, courtesy of the pass and the pass alone, which with how well the run game had been working in the first, that is a huge, huge change. Sauta just manhandled his guy that time and took up the whole A and B gap for Desert Hills. He has been spectacular. Shotgun once again for Thompson with an H back and a running back. He's going to drop and then throw it down the field. One-on-one -on -one coverage and well defended. Once again, this Desert Hills secondary in one-on-one -on -one situations has been excellent, Rustin. It has been really, really good. And one thing, this this right here is exactly what Clark does. It's what he did against Brighton when he was lined up against Matheson, their best yeah. receiver. Similar look. The game was in a tight spot. They went to Matheson, he broke it up. Right here, he's in prime position. There's nothing the receiver can do. The secondary between him and Tuckness and, and Holmes and Mortensen, they have something special. And where this game has shifted to be pass heavy for Cedar Valley, that <laughs> bodes well in Desert Hill's favor right now. Third and eight. Another passing situation coming up for the Aviators. We'll see if he wants to try to find Hanson, who I believe is the far side receiver alone. Lomu in the backfield. Here's a snap from Thompson. Looking to the right side. No, that's Baker over there. And he throws it high and outside, incomplete. Well defended once again by Hunter Clark. Looking for Ethan Johnson that time. And you'll notice right here off that play action, it's just, you're, you're right, it's Clark. Back-to-back -back big plays from him. And he pretty much finished the Brighton game. He's trying to give the offense an opportunity to go tie this one up here. And on fourth, only the second time, I think the second time, that yeah. Cedar Valley's punted tonight. Sorry, I said Baker. You're right, that was... Number five, Johnson in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Here's the punt fielded cleanly by D. Hills. Here's T. Money. 
Gets to the outside and out of bounds. And Desert Hills with a chance to tie the game as the third quarter expires. And Coach Barry thrilled with the effort in the third quarter and the adjustments that he made defensively paid off huge for the Thunder. We'll oh, go ahead, Rustin. Oh, I was just going to say before we went to break there, just the shift is, is incredible. And Cedar Valley, yeah. for right, them right now, you can't help but think that they're feeling a lot of deja vu. We'll keep it right here as we go to the fourth quarter. Thanks for being with us. Our Ideal Home and Paint game of the night. Check out Ideal Home and Paint, 4096 South River Road for all your home improvement needs. Ideal has that. It's been offense on the move for Desert Hills. Throwing the ball, running the ball really well, defensively stopping everything. And it's like a new team here in the second half. And credit, the adjustments made in the locker room, that's a sign of a experienced coaching staff to get their team right back in this game with a full quarter left to go and just trailing now by seven points. And the fans have been in, you know, the energy level has skyrocketed here in the third quarter. And now we enter the fourth quarter at Thunderfield. You feel it in the bleachers. You feel it on the sideline. Desert Hills has a different look to them than they did in the first. You know, when you have a change as significant as at the quarterback position, it can be easy for the whole team to be rattled. It doesn't matter if it's the receivers, the running backs. It can be the defense. And uh, I, I think we saw a little bit of that early on, and now they're rediscovering that identity. They have confidence. They have faith. The offense is moving. Wall has a touchdown thrown tonight. Now that he has that monkey off his back, we see him smiling a little bit there on the on the TV shot. So uh, in this 21-14 ball game with Cedar Valley, Desert Hills an opportunity to march down the field to start the fourth and maybe tie this puppy up. Here's Wall. Motion man hands it to Lincoln Holmes, avoids the diving tackler and gets upfield. He's been awesome on that zone, or excuse me, on that jet sweep play and gets right around a first down there for Desert Hills. Between these two teams tonight, this is probably the funnest blocking football game I've ever seen. If you're a fan of great blocks and, yeah. and creating room for your teammate, this game's for you between both these squads. First and 10. Here's the jet sweep again, this time defended beautifully by Hansen in the backfield, takes down Cummings for a loss. Hansen's a menace. There, there's no other way to say it. He has been all over the field tonight. He had that interception return for a touchdown, had a big grab for a first down, and just blows past everybody wow. to bring down Cummings. It's, it's clear that he's the heart and soul of this Aviator defense. Second down. 15 to go now after the loss of five on the sweep flag and we're going to have a whistle stops play and we'll see what it is oh it's going to go against the aviators i was anticipating a offsides or a false start or something like that procedure wise by desert hills no it'll go against cedar valley thunder have now crept into aviator territory courtesy of that and by crept, I mean about a yard into it. Second down. And 11 now to go. And they're going to keep it up the middle to Bo Wall, who is helped by Taffa for a few extra yards. And great effort by both Wall and Taffa on that one. Good gain there for the Thunder. Just a heads-up play. Normally from the lineman spot, you think, well, i got to get behind so I can push. And for Taffa, you're like, no, nah, I don't need to get behind anything. I'm just going to pull my quarterback and I, for a minute I thought that he was going to get in there and force the fumble. Like a baby <laughs> kangaroo jumping into his mother's uh, pouch there. <laughs> Hopping for a couple extra yards as Wall gets in the shotgun. Twins to either side. Third down. Key moment here for Desert Hills. Takes the snap. Looking at a throw. Flushed out of the pocket right. Still looking down the field then pulls it down. Going to make a move and gets a fabulous Freddy's first down. What a nice move there by Wall as they had the pursuit angle, and he dodged them for the first down. Think of how many times that same scenario played out in the first half, A.T. Think of how many times Wall felt pressure, tried to get out of the pocket, nothing was there, maybe picked up a yard or nothing at all. This time, similar situation, but he's got that confidence. He's able to shake a tackle, push forward for the first down, and uh, we can't see it enough. We're seeing a different Thunder team at this moment. Got ourselves a football player here. 
in the second half playing quarterback for D Hills. Bo Wall, two back set in the shotgun. Hands it up the middle to Titan Morris, breaks a tackle and gets upfield for a few yards. Somehow didn't go down as the Aviators had his legs pretty much wrapped up. Yeah, and that's Morris is kind of just like the rest of the team. They have refound their confidence, and for him, that means continuing to bowl guys over. We've seen all night long. We've seen Lomu do it. We've seen Jenkins do it. Uh, we're used to Morris doing it, and he's uh, he's rediscovered that here in the second half. Second down, play action, throwing it to the left side. Cummings comes down with it. There's a flag on the play, and he's caught it inside, right around the five yard line through the interference penalty. What a catch by Cummings. Incredible grab, and he has the confidence and the ability to not only come down with that football, but also recognize where he's at on the field. And I need a great look at this, because it's pretty well, it's, it's covered well by Cedar Valley, and now it's being ruled. Now oh, we're good to go, we're good to go. Wow. Official scared me there for a second. That was cool. It looked to me like his foot landed on white. That's, but that's, exactly, that's exactly what I was thinking. Either way, <laughs> it would have been a pass interference penalty, but they get the benefit of the call, and it'll put them at about the five-yard line. How about that? We haven't called his name a ton tonight. He's a big play guy, and finally, number's first, called. First and goal. Wall rolls out, looking to throw, maybe looking to run, chase down, lowers his shoulder and goes down at about the three yard line. And from the three yard line, this is where Desert Hills is gonna be all right. You got Tyden Morris in there, you got Krona Kroll, who if you wanna run him to the outside, the playbook opens up for the Thunder right here. And here's the replay once again on that long throw. Cummings makes the catch and is pushed out of bounds. So Cedar Valley fans are yelling at their screen. It shouldn't have been that big of a gain. They would have had a little less on the pass interference call, 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Instead, they got it inside the five. Here's Wall. They're going to go power keeper yeah. up the middle, and Bo Wall bullies into the end zone, the sophomore. Give it to him. How about it after a first half where he was struggling to get adjusted? Now he's thrown for a touchdown. He's ran for a touchdown, and he's got his team with an opportunity to tie it up with 20 unanswered points. Wow. Full wall, man. How about that? Coming yeah, of great, age. Great response. And we, we talked about it. You get comfortable with the running backs. The running backs settled in in the third quarter. And guess who followed suit? The quarterback. Great job to respond. As the extra point is up and through. We're tied up here at Desert Hills High. 21-21 on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard. What a game here at Thunderfield. The tale of two halves. Bull wall. There's the man of the hour. What a a job he's done here in the second half. Big smile on his face, good for Bo. Quick break, back with more right after this. Fabulous Freddy's is the local's choice for a full service car wash. It's fast, have your car washed in just 20 minutes or less. Fabulous Freddy's always keeps it clean inside and out with two Southern Utah locations as well as in Vegas, Lehigh and Sandy. Time apart has taught us in our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder, space to connect, space to imagine, space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. We got a tie ball game, folks. Welcome back, Desert Hills High School. Ball bounces finally into the end zone. Jenkins was hoping that it was going to bounce into the end zone because the took a minute. Bo Wall, ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour for Desert Hills just ran one in. Has had three great drives here in the second half, and we got a tie ball game after being down 21 zip at halftime. Desert Hills has tied it up 8-34 here in the fourth quarter, Cedar Valley with the ball. And you gotta give credit right now to the Thunder defense as well because, well, Cedar Valley hasn't scored here in the second half, and all credit to them. Thompson with the double hard count, clap, 
And Desert Hills looks to have jumped. And the big fella, Sauta, checking himself out. He has been so good, especially in the second half. Yeah, this is the fun part of the game, right? The mental side of it, in, in the sense that you have all momentum now. You've rallied from this 21-0 deficit. It's a tied ball game. Emotions are high, fans are yelling, you're all pumped on the sideline, but you still got to keep your head. You got to remember to keep doing what you're doing that got you to this point. First and five. Will Desert Hill still be able to stop the run like they have all second half? Ball's on the turf, fumbled by Thompson on the snap, and Cedar Valley jumps right back on it, but they lose the down on the miscue in the backfield. It, we'll get a good, good look at this right here. Yeah, he simply just lost the ball, had it. Had it squirt out, a, a typical I shouldn't eat that popcorn type situation right there. <laughs> I think we've seen a, a reverse. What Desert Hills was doing in the first half, Cedar Valley's now doing. They're having a hard time, a hold on the football here and there. The passing isn't quite working like it's supposed to. Their running game's kind of disappeared. Now Desert Hills is running guys over with their running backs. Second and eight, motion a man over. They're looking to pass, hitch route. No, they'll throw it to the out route, caught. Good pursuit by Desert Hills. They gang tackle him. Polo, excuse me, Polo comes in to help clean it up. Forward progress has him at about a half yard gain, and it'll be third down. They're trying to go to Fisher, one of their superstars. He has a touchdown from the fullback spot, but as a wideout, he hasn't been as involved in this offense, and uh, just solid recognition. Cummings was all over it. Polo's been amazing this second half. We've said his name a whole awful lot. Third down, about seven to go for the Aviators. Thompson takes the snap, looking left, pressure from the right side, throws it down the field, overthrows his receiver, incomplete. Guess who? It's Clark. Yeah. Again. Once again, making a play, it's Hunter Clark. He did it last week, he's done it this week. And uh, I, I can't, that was, a, that was a nifty little double move right here where he was supposed to peel around and it was the right idea, but Clark just doesn't bite nothing. He hasn't, he hasn't bitten at anything all night. That was amazing. That was textbook how to semi-bite on the route, but then recover without yeah. holding or without excessive contact and staying with the guy. Very impressive by Clark. Good hang time on the punt. Cummings will catch it at about the 40. There is a flag. Two and now flags. another flag as a aviator was yeah. at the Desert Hill sideline. And there was some pushing and shoving. We'll see the calls here. With 7.02 left in the fourth quarter, Desert Hills will have the ball. All I know is the first flag came as soon as that ball hit the foot of the punter. So you can guess what that one might be. The second yeah. flag flew as Joel Mayo got kind of tied up on the Desert Hills sideline, the lone aviator in a sea of black and white. Appreciate you being with us. Ideal home and paint game of the night. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson with you here on ESPN 97.7 CEC TV. Also streaming on sportsradio977.com. And uh, the head official talking to Coach Rick Berry of the Desert Hills Thunder, seeing what he wants to happen here. And now they'll confer. I'm watching Hunter Clark over here on the Thunder sideline. And you know what he immediately does after having a couple big successful defensive plays? He goes to that big board they have down there, the TV, where you can kind of review and, and think about and talk about what went down. And we have a personal foul on the defense. Knocking a player out of bounds. Those penalties will offset. We will replay fourth down. Okay, offsetting penalties. There was a personal foul on Desert Hills. There was an illegal procedure on the punt by the Aviators, and we'll have to do it all over again. Set it up. Another opportunity for Holmes Mortensen. Make something happen. And the punter standing on his own nine yard line. Gets the snap, boots it. Good kick. They're going to have to go back for it. It's going to bounce over their heads. 
And we'll roll inside the 20 yard line. What a kick Ooh. for the Aviators by number 38. That's Tristan Johnson. That's been, that's probably been the biggest play for Cedar Valley here in the second half, which is a testament to Desert Hills responding the way they have. But that was absolutely the punt they needed to try to regain some control of this ball game. But the Thunder offense has been moving so well. Wall now has confidence. The running backs, Kroll and Ty Morris in particular, they have they have all the mojo on their side, and the offensive line has really started to create that separation that Cedar Valley had in the first half. Aviators flip the field, and we'll see if Wall and the Thunder can stay hot offensively. He's got Kroll with him in the backfield. Ford, the motion man, they'll hand it to him. Ford gets tangled up. What a defensive play. Ooh. By the Aviators, that's 24, Travion Marshall in the backfield. Marshall's had a couple really nice sticks tonight, and he just gets the right step. He's He seems to be moving right before that ball snapped, not off sides. I'm not saying it was a penalty, but he just timed that perfectly. Second now and 21. Well, I think it's more like second and 15, excuse me. Here we go. Wall. Dodges some defenders. He's still on his feet, but then he'll get tackled from behind. And a beautiful play once again defensively by the Aviators, who just like that have a third down situation upcoming for Desert Hills. And we see him Wall scramble for a first down earlier. He's not really in a spot to scramble for a first down. He's just trying to keep something alive, yeah. something happening, because the Aviators getting in the backfield was, there, there was a lot of them. It was pretty abundant. Third and long. Here's Wall. Wall dropping back, screens it, throws it in the turf, incomplete, and they'll have to punt it from and, their own end zone. And for, for Kona right there, who, who's the recipient of the potential screen pass, you can kind of see him slap that football because based on how Desert Hills got out, how the line moved on that screenplay, I think they had numbers. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy to sit here and wonder what if and and your maybes and your should haves and your could haves, but uh, it, Desert Hills looked like they had a, at least were set up for a pretty nice gain on that screenplay. Instead, they shift it back to the defense and put it in their hands. And credit Tristan Johnson. The punter for the Aviators. Yeah, for real. With, like you said, maybe the play of the second half for Cedar Valley. This punt up short will bounce at about the 40, 45, and go out of bounds. It'll still be in C or excuse me, in Thunder territory. There is a flag at the line of scrimmage. And right now, if you're Cedar Valley, you are thinking in particular. You're thinking in particular that the run game works so well in the first half, okay? Do we go back to that and, and try to milk the clock out? Or are we aggressive with uh, trying to get the first down, get a score, and put it in Desert Hill's hands? Like, you're just not quite sure what you're going to do there. I, I mean, I, I don't know quite how to how to approach it. You haven't scored this entire second half, so do you just go guns blazing? Or do you try to get that five minutes, 25 seconds down as as low as possible, yeah. maybe settle for a field goal, yeah, right? You've already point. attempted one tonight. You're 0 of 1 uh, in terms of a field goal. It was a long field goal, mind you. But after the penalty, half the distance to the goal, Desert Hills punter, Polu, is about a foot and a half away from the baseline. Here's the snap, another flag. Polu kicks it. It's going to be fair caught at about the 35-yard line. So great field position for the Aviators, but with another penalty pending. Yeah, we'll see what that penalty is all about. In fact, that punt uh, set Cedar Valley up in better position than the last punt. So <laughs> we'll that's right. Only by about five yards or so. But and if you accept the penalty, you can make it even more difficult. They would have to. Snap it from about the two and a half yard line. But will they just say, look, we want to just take it from the 35? We have an illegal formation on the offense. Mm. Outside man left side is off the line. They're going to take the five yards at the end of the run. It'll be first down. Okay, so they're going to attack on five yards from where it was fair caught. So it'll be up closer to the 30 yard line. 
for Cedar Valley. Which this is, depending on how much you, it, it's high school football, okay? So, so me throwing out this hypothetical probably does very little. But if you have confidence in your kicker, which, I mean, they had enough confidence to attempt what? How, how many yards was that right. field goal attempt last time? Then maybe you're okay, you know, with giving it to Jenkins, with giving it to, to Lomu and letting them go to work and hoping they'd rediscover that magic they had in the first half and running down the clock. I say there's still too much time. You just go and you score and you live with the results, and I think that's what they're going to do with, with Thompson from the gun here. We'll see what their mentality is this drive. They'll give it to Jenkins, excuse me, Jenkins up the middle, and he will be stopped after a few yards on first down. And I'm curious to see if they just keep pounding that. In between the tackles, just run right at them versus trying to throw it, which they haven't had a lot of success with against this Desert Hills secondary. Well, Desert Hills threw a punch back. Uh, hypothetically in the second half. They stopped the run game for a second. They said, okay, we're going to go to the pass. Yep. And that got the Thunder back in this game. Not that Thompson's done anything wrong, but it's given all momentum back to D. Hill. So maybe they maybe they turn the tides and say, okay, that didn't work. Let's go back to our superstar running backs. Second and six, Thompson takes the, bobbles the snap, then hands it to Jenkins. Jenkins trying to get to the corner, but he's chased down by Crowell and saved what would have been a, a first down because there was a lot of space for him to run. But Kroll, great hustle. When we knew that Kroll was coming over to Desert Hills, we thought, well, think of the offensive possibilities and what he can do. It's going to be so exciting. And really tonight, as a defender, he is he's really impacted this ball game. Don't get me wrong. He already has an offensive score as well tonight, but he's just been he's been everywhere. Third down, six to go from the 26-yard line. Five wide. Thompson looking at the throw. Throws it wide oh. open. Broken coverage. Touchdown. Ethan Johnson reels it in. Nobody was in sight. And what a play call by the Aviators. And it couldn't get easier than that on third down. Just, I, I got to see the replay. I don't even know what to say after. Let's see. So we have safety comes up. Cornerback stays. Nobody is there as uh, Ethan Johnson just strolls into the end zone. Just a, a defensive breakdown. Yeah. There, there's no other way to put it. There wasn't, wasn't any move that shook a defender. The defense just lost track of Johnson. They were focused on one receiver. He sneaks in, and, uh, well, this is how Cedar Valley won last week. Flag on the play. We'll stop a dead ball. And I think as a defensive secondary player, you're thinking, look, they're just going for the sticks here. So I, I'm anticipating yes. a guy stopping at a six-yard route, right? and I'm going to go up and be aggressive, on, and then the guy sneaks right by you. Which was really a good, good play call from Cedar Valley. The offense had been stagnant in the second half. You drop something like that, you get the defense to bite um, and, and walk in. And remember, against Copper Hills, Copper Hills came all the way back. Cedar Valley just scored one time in the second half, and it ended up being the yeah. one score that was enough. This is how they won last week with a different score. The other team comes back, they score when it matters most. PAT was moved back, doesn't matter, up and good. And so Cedar Valley retakes the lead 28-21 on our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard after a touchdown thrown to that man. Ethan Johnson gives the Aviators the lead. We'll be right back right here on ESPN 97.7. Ideal Home and Paint. Ideal has all the top quality brands like PPG, Pratt & Lambert, and Cimarron Floor Epoxy Coatings. Ideal has that. Check out their Paint Design Center, 4096 South River Road, or call 656-0801. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Welcome back, Desert Hills High School, Ideal Home and Paint, Region 10 game of the night between the Aviators and the Thunder. Cedar Valley just retook the lead. They kick it to Lincoln Holmes. Or excuse me, not Holmes. Nice return once again. That's not number six, it's number five, Ashton Carnley, who's done a good job twice on kickoffs like that. As the up man, bringing it out, running hard. Nice job. 
Okay, so let's set the table right here for the Thunder. You're down 21 nothing. You come back, you tie it up 21-21. Your offense, which has been on a roll, stalls out last drive. Yeah. Aviators finally get that pressure they had in the first half. So you, you can't be thinking about that, though. you got to be thinking about what was working in the third quarter and the start of the fourth quarter because this – this matter, this drive is very, very big. Two back set, they go to Polu. Polu, dodging and peeking it in, trying to find any space, doesn't find any, gets a yard, maybe two yards. Was that, was that Polu or Kroll? Oh, I'm sorry. That's, oh. that's Kona Kroll. That's 22, apologies. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, Polu can rush too. <laughs> Would have been his first carry of the game <laughs> had it been Polu. Pardon me. Two runners in the game, and it's Kroll and Titan Morris with Bohal, second and eight. Wall takes the snap, takes the handoff, and he'll be sacked. It just, that play broke down pretty quickly. You'd think Wall might have a tiny bit of time, and by the time... You play action, he's looking, his read isn't there, his first option isn't there, and by the time that happens, it's already broke down, and you have number 79. We've called his name a couple times tonight, Dean Caldwell, getting back there next to, I think, Fisher. 250 in our We Win Injury Loss scoreboard here in the fourth quarter. Third and long coming up, play of the game for Desert Hills. They got two downs to get three yards. Or excuse me, 13 yards. Here's Wall, trips to the near side. Straight drop back, looking for a screen play. Gets it to Morris. Morris gets past one defender. Lowers his shoulder to the sideline. Woo. And it's going to be fourth and short coming up. Just short. And this is what happened on the last offensive possession when the drive stalled. They tried a screen play to Kona. The ball was thrown short. This time, Wall gets it there. Morris has the speed to get past, lowers the shoulder. And we have a very manageable fourth down here. And it looks like they're going to bring in some beef here on fourth and short. They got, there's Polu. There's Polu out there. who's going to be playing tight end. 22 personnel. Take the snap. Power up forward for Bo Hall. Bo Wall. And it's going to be close. He's right at the line to gain here on fourth down. And we'll see exactly where it's spotted here. What are they going to say? And it looks just a little bit short. We'll see if they measure. No. They're giving it to Desert Hills without a measure. Yeah, I, I think they're going to measure I can't this. believe it. They, I mean, they're going to. You would think they'd measure this, right? And they've already moved the chains. There's nothing. It's a first down. I'm I'm, I'm surprised they didn't hey, measure. Well, I, I mean, Desert Hills, all I'm the fans a, here up in the booth, we'll, we'll take that. I'm a mile away. Yeah, but uh, and that's that's also a good point. 158 on the clock, first and 10, Wall outside to Morris on a swing pass. Morris, stiff arm, goes down inbounds. Clock will continue to run. He gets about eight yards. Second and two. That was a good play. I mean, Cedar Valley thought they had a little bit of pursuit. And that arm that came out right on the helmet as he fought for extra yards. Under two minutes, under a minute 30 now here. Second and one, 125 left here in the fourth quarter. Wall trips to the far side. Takes a snap, looking to throw. He's got Morty on a little inside out route. Morty lays out for it, makes the catch. It's a first down. Clock will stop for a second as they reset the ball at 112 on the scoreboard. Just an athletic grab. He had to stretch. And they're looking to run it, but the clock is stopped, and Desert Hills will use a timeout. They'll stop it at 105. And they're on the 45 yard line of the Aviators with 105 left. Down seven, 28-21, Desert Hills trails Cedar Valley. What more could you ask for on a Friday night, ladies and gentlemen, here at 
Thunder feel, Bernsey? It's just been such an odd game, and I mean that in the best way. You have Cedar Valley jump out to 21-0. You're thinking that this is a sinking ship in week two, and they'll have to move on to week three. Desert Hills rallies. They'll all momentum on their side, and then Cedar Valley gets a big punt, forces the stop there, and then gets it back and ends up scoring on a defensive breakdown. It's very reminiscent if you're an Aviator fan yeah. of, of last week's win. Like it's just, what are the chances of, of Cedar Valley playing that cardiac kid role a couple different times yeah. in two games? But yeah. for Desert Hills, you have a sophomore quarterback, first varsity start, he has the opportunity to upend it. He's done a good job in the second half, but now the pressure is really, really on. First and 10, here's Wall. Looking at a throw to the right side, ball deflected by Hansen and incomplete. And Hansen coming off the edge, he is an animal. Just right there. No, Nobody really understands where he's going. He comes around that corner untouched, right in the face of Wall, and gets a hand on it. Second and 10, 103 left in regulation. Desert Hills trailing by seven points with the ball. Here's Wall, straight drop back, pressured. He's got room to run, he's at the 40. The 35, he'll run out of bounds after getting a fabulous Freddy's first down. Clock will stop at 56 seconds as they get further into Aviator territory. Something that you can't overlook there is the fact that not only did he pick up the first down with his legs second time tonight, but that he stepped out of bounds. Like That's a good call, knowing that you're probably not going to get more. Stopping the clock. First and 10, Wall. Looking to the right side, throwing it up and deep. Incomplete. Not near Lincoln Holmes. They were looking for a flag there. The fans chanting for a flag, want something there. There's a little bit of contact, but I don't think so. Nothing, nothing that yeah. really hasn't been done by anybody else tonight. So uh, yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we but have the this late replay. in the game, everyone's looking for something, right? <laughs> Second and ten for the Thunder. It'll be Tyden Morris, the lone back. Mortensen. A wide receiver with Cummings on this side. You've got another Cummings and Holmes to the far side. Wall looks one way, then looks the other. Dancing around, he goes to the right side. Turns around, he needs a block. No, he's going to throw it to Tide Morris. Morris catches it. He gets to the first down, a little bit short. Just short. But gets out of bounds, nice stiff arm. And the clock will stop at 38 seconds for the Thunder. That's the transition of Bo Wall that we've seen come alive in the second. Earlier, he would have just tried to pick up anything. Probably went down two yards behind the line of scrimmage. This time, he rotates, flips back the other direction, has confidence that guys will pick up people in pursuit, and he's able to dump it off there for a gain. So he's, he's it's a high-pressure situation. He's not panicking yet. Third and two coming up for Desert Hills. Here's the snap. Wall rolling left this time. He's going to go into the corner of the end zone to Cummings. Just through the mitts. Would have been a miraculous catch. Great effort by Cummings on third and short. Not a bad ball there by Wall. Put it where his receiver had a chance at it. Well, it, not Ooh. a bad ball, but also how about, how about that throw in the sense you're a right-handed quarterback rolling to your left. You're throwing while on the move to your left. That is a really hard throw to make, especially trying to get it right there and pinpoint it in the corner of the field. Just oh so close. Not a bad ball is the understatement of the game. That was a tremendous ball and, and by Bo Wall. It would have been a tough catch, but there was an opportunity. Fourth and short. We're going to have a timeout on the field by the Thunder with 32 seconds left, Desert Hills trails 28-21. They've got the ball on the Cedar Valley 24-yard line, and it's fourth and a long one with the game on the line. What do you think? Uh, I think in this situation, on um, fourth and one, I think you go to what, what's really kind of elevated in the second half. You go back to Titan, you go back to Kona, you're running back, let him pick up the first, and then go to work from there it, it, it's gotten you this far I know Wall's starting to come into his own he's looking good back there he has more confidence he has more trust in himself and his teammates but on fourth and one go to your big boys do what you did to pick up the first earlier that controversial first bring in Polo with a tight end spot power these guys through and I, I'm not sure they're going to give that look right now Polo's not out there the tight end they're still going to have Holmes Mortensen lined yep. all the way out both Cummings 
and uh, in the shotgun. So yeah, single back set. Ty Morris. They have shown a lot of two back sets. Not this time. Bull yeah. Wall takes the snap. Looking to throw. No delayed handoff to oh. Ty Morris. It's wide open. Morris going to the right side and into the end zone. What a call! Touchdown, Desert Hills. Let's go, Desert Hills. Look at that. I. We were baffled, okay? They're, we're not going to sugarcoat it. We were surprised that they weren't bringing out the tight ends and the heavy guns, and we're like, come on, do what got you here. But instead, the play call is perfection. We never should have doubted it because that delay was just enough to catch the defense off guard and let your main man, Titan Morris, do the rest. And how about that blocking downfield by Taufa? Just solid all the way around. We ain't going home yet. What a brilliant offensive call. And the kick is up and good. We got a tie ball game. I think you did a good job picking the game of the week. What do you think? 28-28 with 25 seconds left in the game. We'll take a break. Let's take a 30-second timeout. We'll be back after this ESPN 97.7. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. Hi. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls in eighth grade. Oh, yeah. That one day at PE when they were, like, yelling at me, and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much, like, that helped me because, like, I finally, like, knew that I had somebody. Welcome back. Thanks for being with us. ESPN 97.7, your ideal home and paint game of the night. Desert Hills in epic fashion on fourth down, scores to tie the game at 28. Titan Morris. They needed a, they needed a couple yards. They decided to go the whole distance, and we, we said it. We were confused at the set they were in. We've seen them convert first downs yeah. in much different sets, and it was absolute perfection. Here's the kick, looks like it'll be short of a touchback and returnable here for the Aviators. To the 20, he'll be tackled right at the 20. Good coverage by Desert Hills, 21 seconds left. We'll see what approach the Aviators take. And, and for Desert Hills, one of their biggest strengths is clearly their secondary. They, they rely a lot on these guys between Clark and Tuckness and, and Mortensen and Holmes and what they're able to do. So it, it, in these types of situations, it, if, if Cedar Valley decides they want to push the pace in these 21 seconds, you're probably feeling pretty confident that you can get it done here because this whole second half, Cedar Valley's gone to the pass and it hasn't really worked other than that defensive breakdown. So here's Thompson. From the shotgun, rolling out to the right. Looking to throw, throws an out pattern, it's caught, and Baker makes the catch and gets out of bounds. After a shorter gain on a pass, about four or five yards. And the clock goes to 14.9 seconds. And you're, you're, just, you're just dropping here, right? You're, yeah. you're okay with anything as long as they don't get past, I mean, midfield. You're all right, just wrap up, get it done. Look at the way the defense is set up right now. Other than your three guys out there rushing, it's you're okay with the completion here. That yep. doesn't bother you. Here we go, they're just gonna hand it off. And Ooh. Jacobs takes a huge hit. Was that? That was a nasty Was that Kona? I, I don't know who it was, but they absolutely laid the wood there. Kona Kroll, Jenkins has had an awesome game, and he's also taken some punishment. This time, a Thunder player has him low, and then he gets leveled. Sauta has him low, and then he gets bent backwards. That is a tough play. Yeah, that was Kona. Big time hit by Kona Kroll. With 6.4 seconds left. Timeout on the field. I didn't see who took the timeout, Rustin. Uh, you know what, I'll be completely honest with you, I didn't either. I don't know why. I was looking at that hit. I guess Cedar Valley wants to try one last play here with eight seconds left, potentially. Well, they did force a defensive breakdown earlier. They're only score the second half. Maybe they're hoping for something of a similar effect, but I, I can't imagine the Desert Hills won't do anything but send everybody way back and just make sure they keep them out of the end zone. Thanks for being with us. Stay tuned for the post-game show. We'll name our Ernie's to Sinclair station 
player of the game. Check out Ernie's two Sinclair Station in St. George. Also in Beaver. Best chicken strips in the West and, and several other locations. Here's the snap and they'll just sit on it and run out the clock and go into overtime. What a game here in week two at Desert Hills High School. We're going to OT. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back right after this. This is Tyler from We Win Injury Law. We win for you, period. If you have been in a motorcycle accident, car accident, hit by a semi-truck, or bitten by a dog, we will fight and win for you, period. Visit 435wewin.com to have me look at your case. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Welcome back. Overtime coming up. Captains reconvene and say, hey, good job so far. Good game. Shame so many. What, what, what you have to say in this situation is it, it's a shame one of these teams has to lose, right, Russell? Uh, yeah, and it's been a tale of two different halves, as cheesy and cliche as that is. But this isn't soccer. Is. We're uh, going for a winner. That's true. We're going for a winner. <laughs> Somebody tonight is going to walk away 2-0. and oh. Will it be yeah. the home team, Desert Hills, or will it be Cedar Valley? And it, it's fun to watch in overtime because you watch these captains come out and you get a feel for how the games went. You, you understand... These guys either hate each other, they're sick of each <laughs> other, or in this case, watching these guys talk in midfield, there's a lot of respect yeah. here between these squads. A lot of respect for Cedar Valley coming out and playing the way they did, and a lot of respect for Desert Hills coming back and making this game go into overtime. So it's, uh, like you said, shame that one of them has to lose, and they, they understand that, and these two teams respect each other. I, I, I love it. This could be the beginning of a very – nice rivalry you always have those preseason games that every region 10 team plays dixie always plays springville right yep cedar plays juab this could right. be one all right here we go cedar valley will get the ball first desert hills won the toss and we'll get the ball second and here we go ot on a friday night in Southern Utah, Desert Hills, the preseason favorite in Region 10, won against Brighton in Week 1. And now I think the way this game has gone, the way it started, down 21-0 going into the locker room, surprised I, myself and I think a lot of people. And then they came out a different team with their hair on fire and have been able to tie it up. And that's why we're in OT, and what a call. As of now, maybe the play of the game, Rustin. Titan Morris's fourth down call. They just give it to him on a beautiful delayed handoff, and he gets into the end zone to tie the game. And the offense came alive, but the defense deserves so much credit here as well, and they'll have an opportunity right now with Cedar Valley starting with the football on the 25 to make their presence known. But other than the defensive breakdown, which was a big mistake, no doubt about it, but they've been pretty close to perfect if you, if you take that off the board completely. OT, first down from the 25-yard line for Cedar Valley. Here's Cooper Thompson, and we're going to have a flag. Looks and like the left tackle. It's going to go against the Aviators, and it makes it that much more difficult on themselves because when they've got behind the sticks, it kind of negates their opportunity to run, which has been their yes. specialty, except for in the second half, Desert Hill's done a tremendous job against the run. When Cedar Valley feels that they're in passing downs, that absolutely have to have passing downs, that's where, like you said, that's where the Thunder have had their advantage. First and 15, Cooper Thompson motions a man, hands it to Jenkins who tries to get outside, breaks one tackle, won't break the next one as Morty comes up and gets the tackle for loss for Desert Hills. Well, Holmes was pursuing hard, a solid block there. He wasn't able to quite get there, but you see 
Holmes be the first one to, to make Jenkins think a little bit, and then what a closing tackle. You said it. T-Money coming in and getting it done. And now this overtime where you start on your 25, Cedar Valley's moving the wrong direction. Second and 17, and throwing the ball down the field has been difficult for the Aviators. Five wide for Thompson. Second and long, here's Thompson. Looking to throw pump fakes and then goes over the top. Well covered, as always, by who else? Hunter Clark. He was in the wide receiver position himself, tracking that football down. Wow. And, and he has a big fist pump at the end of that. He's fired up, and he deserves to be. Nobody has been more shut down tonight than this guy. And Desert Hills has one of the best secondaries in all of Utah football. Clark is a massive piece of that. I'm surprised they keep going in those one-on-one -on -one situations to Clark's side, yeah. but then you look over, Tuckness has been tremendous on the other side as Where well. Where do you go? With oh. Taven as the safety over on that end. Five wide again, third and long for Thompson. From the 32-yard line here in overtime. Thompson, drop back, throws it, outside, caught, big oh. hit, knocks it loose, and we'll see if it's incomplete or a fumble. Are they going to say he caught the ball and lost it on the hit, Rustin? I, whatever it is, Desert Hills is shocked at the result. You see Holmes with the head, his hand on his helmet, or maybe, okay, now they're starting to get a little more excited. They were, I mean, they, that was bang, bang. Yeah. And the refs are getting together and saying, did he have possession for long enough to justify that as a completion? Ball is caught, big hit. By Clark. By, by Clark, unbelievable. Yeah, Put his course. hat right on the ball. And he does the Steph Curry night-night pose where he puts the hands to the side of his head. And they're going to say it was a completion, a fumble forced, and a fumble recovery for the Thunder. Oh, amazing. Man, and, and talk about... Talk about a team that's rallied together. They weren't supposed to be in this position anyway. It was looking like everything was over the end of the first, and now when they need a big play, they've got one. And a lot of those times it's come from this guy, number two, Clark. As a defensive back, you don't get your name called often, and that's a good thing typically. But tonight, every time we call his name, he's done something pretty spectacular. Two back set for Wall. They give it to Kroll right up the middle. He bursts forward. For a four and a half yard gain. And Desert Hills will see how much trust they have in the field goal unit. Yeah. Potentially. They're going to hand it right up to Kroll again, who's going to fly forward. It's going to be close. Maybe a little bit short. If they're going to pick up five to four yards per carry here, I mean, they might not even worry about the field yeah. goal unit. They'll just try to punch it in because the, their running backs have got them back in this ball game. It led to the quarterback becoming more comfortable. Thus, you have Desert Hills with an opportunity to win here in OT. Absolutely. Here's Morris. Cuts it inside. Ooh. Stiff arm stays on his feet. Spins around. Tackle it about the 10. Fabulous. Morris, Freddy's first down. Tied Morris. This game's had everything you want. Everything you want. Turnovers, big plays, big hits, and some nasty stiff arms on top of that. Look wow. at that. I mean, you can't help but feel defeated when you have a hand in your face being pushed to the turf. I've been in that spot. It's not fun. Because <laughs> they're not your, your arms only reach so far, man. First and goal from the 10. Here's Wall, two back set. Gives it to Morris. Morris is going to be stopped. Good job getting in there by the Aviators, getting to his feet was Travion Marshall. Yeah, he's he's been a couple different places here tonight. He's been really solid for the Cedar Valley team. He just kind of pushes through himself and enough to wrap around the leg and create a lack of forward momentum. Second down, gives it to Kroll up the middle. He's got a lead blocker. He'll be tackled at about the five yard line. And it'll be third and goal from the five. There's a lid on this place, AT. Look at the stands, look at the fans. The energy is high. When Kroll hit that initial burst through the spot, everybody did one of those half stands, like they were getting ready to celebrate. It's, they can taste it. The Thunder just have to finish the deal. And with Morris and Kroll, they can do it. We've seen them pull it out and throw it in a situation like this earlier on yeah. in the game. No, they won't. They'll just give it to Kroll. He'll be stopped. 
at about the two yard line and a fourth and goal from the two coming up as Lincoln Holmes will come back in the game with the field goal unit to kick it. Amazing. Oh, well, they wanted to finish it right here. Instead, they're going to take the safe approach as they should and go for three. And really, getting there, a good tackle. Looked like we had number 31 who was in the vicinity as well as, I think that was 88? Tristan, James Young. Tristan John will be tempted to be iced by the Aviators with the timeout. And very similar to Cedar Valley, we did not see Desert Hills attempt a field goal in that yeah. win over Brighton. All right, so I, I, I don't yeah. know entirely. Shorter than a PAT, but you're over, way over by the right half, right. which makes it kind of a different angle. It's it's not it's not like going out there and kicking a PAT. If that's what you're thinking, it's like, oh, it's as easy as an extra point. No. He's made all of those. It is a very different feeling. And then you yeah. add the weight and pressure of the game on the line, it's it's not a given. It's it's definitely not a given. But the Thunder have confidence in this young man, and for them to come back with an opportunity to win this game within itself is pretty spectacular. And we'll see number 23, Brock Mui, is the long snapper for the field goals. And here we go. Thunder fans on their feet, game on the line, fourth down in overtime. A kick can win it here for Desert Hills. Tristan John, the kicker. Here's the snap, a little high. John kicks it up and good! Desert Hills wins! Comes back from down 21-0 at halftime to win an OT here at home. This is one of those wins early in the season. I know it's week two, but this really ultimately can define who you are. Desert Hills is now going to be known as the team that is capable of overcoming adversity despite being the hands-on favorite, despite everybody looking to them as if they're already number one. Sometimes if you feel you're the best and you get in positions like this, it's easy to give up and say maybe we're not the best. For Desert Hills, they took that challenge Amazing. head on, came back, tied it up, and then went down again, tied it up again, forced OT, and they're going to walk away with the victory. When you talk about heart, I, I don't want to be cliche, AT, but this was heart tonight. Incredible heart and no give up in the thunder. And what a turnaround and the, the – you know, the coaching staff, an amazing job, the adjustments they made in that second half to put their guys in a position to do what they just did, win the game. Incredible. We're going to take a, let's take a two-minute break. We'll be back with the post-game show. Name our Ernie Stu Sinclair Station player of the game when we come back. Since 1946, Wilkinson's House of Lighting has been a fan of all Southern Utah high school sports. These are special kids. Help us celebrate these young men and women and all the student athletes by getting out to the games and cheering them on. From Wilkinson's House of Lighting. <laughs> yeah. Sam, Elmo. Oh, hey, Julia. Are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. <laughs> with Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band! Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Beyond the park you know exists a world you don't. A world that is greater. Greater than just one passion. Greater than just one adventure. Greater than just one moment. Come to where life is greater. Come to Greater Zion. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. 
Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Welcome back, ESPN 97.7. What a game. The ideal home and paint game of the night. Desert Hills in overtime gets to win 31-28 over the C Cedar Valley Aviators. Desert Hills was trailing 21-0 at halftime. And unbelievable, Rustin. We're going to name our Ernie's 2 Sinclair Station player of the game. Check out Ernie's 2 in Beaver, Cedar, St. George, and more for the best chicken strips in the West at Ernie's. And what do you think? Because there's defensive players, there's offensive players, and it's basically all second half stuff. Who's standing out to you? What are some of the options we can choose from for D Hills for our player of the game? There's so many options. Uh, you have to give credit, first of all, to for Bo Wall, his first ever varsity start. The sophomore steps into the starting quarterback spot for a team that's not only projected first in region, but a team that's supposed to be one of your best state title contenders. And all of a sudden, you're the main man driving the ship. That's not easy to do. He settled in after the first half. Delivered in the second, had some big throws, had some big first downs. He picked up with his legs, passed for a touchdown to Polu. So you have to give him credit. You also have to give Tyden Morris credit because the run game wasn't working in the first half. And what ended up happening is he eventually just said, I'm going to do what I can for this team and threw some nasty blocks to let guys get open uh, behind him. And then he turned it on in the rushing game, had that big hit that he lowered on the cornerback. You give credit there. Kona Kroll was amazing all night on the defensive side. Had some big moves offensively. Had a touchdown for Desert Hills. He's certainly deserving. In, in a game like this where they show as much heart and as much camaraderie as they do, it, it's really hard to pick. And I, yeah. I keep – Going back, just to be different, just to buck the trend too. You have to select. You have to look at somebody like Hunter Clark, yeah. who had a big pass breakup in that Brighton game when the Bengals were trying to come back, and then tonight just shuts things down. Anytime they tried to go number two's direction, yeah. it was like Revis Island out there. There, there. there was nothing. There was nothing there. There was nothing happening. And then, with the game on the line, it's overtime. You're not really sure the outcome. They get it to their big star, Tegan Hansen for Cedar Valley, who have been great all night long. Clark comes in, and for, for really the first time all night, he doesn't prevent a play from happening. He makes a play by lowering his shoulder, his helmet, whatever he did. He knocks that ball loose. Desert Hills gets it back, ends the game. So he, he's very deserving as well. I, I, just, I could see it going in a thousand different directions, but – I feel like sometimes we don't give the cornerbacks enough love because if you're a cornerback and you're not being talked about, it's normally because you're doing your job. That's right. If we're talking about you, it means that they either – throw it down the field. Exactly, exactly. And so I, I don't know. I, I lean in that direction, but, I mean, Kona is so deserving. It, it, it's tough. It, it, pick for me, AT. I'm scared. All right, we're going to go with – I like your philosophy because – Hunter Clark was locked down, and he made that play at the end. Let's give it to him as the Ernie's 2 Sinclair Station player of the game. Congratulations to Hunter Clark and everybody else. We've got to give it to nine guys tonight exactly. for Desert Hills. We're going to take a one-minute break. When we come back, we're going to show you the highlights, and we're going to also pick, equally difficult, the AWP, Appliance Wholesalers Plus Playmaker Play of the Game, as well as give you some Wilkinson's stats. One minute break, back with more right after this. Shopping space. 
Welcome back. Post game show brought to you by our friends at Wilkinson's House of Lighting. They've been supporting Southern Utah sports since their inception back in 1946. They've been your hometown light fan and fixture experts at Wilkinson's House of Lighting. All right, let's do it, Rustin. The AWP playmaker play of the game. Now we know that Hunter Clark caused the fumble yeah. that ended the possession in, in overtime. But I'm going back to regulation on fourth down. How about that call on the delayed handoff to Tide Morris, which tied up the game? Yes. That was an unbelievable play in a game that had a bunch of them. Well, and, and there's no play for Clark to make without that, right? There's no overtime without Ty Morris scoring on that scamper. And when you look at that, me and you were sitting here and we're wondering what is happening because Desert Hills has converted a couple big first downs running a two tight end set, right, or running yep. – uh, dual backs right there in the shotgun, back on the left, back on the right. They don't do either of those things. They set up like that, and we're like, oh, man, they're going to wall past this to try to win this game. A, a quarterback who had a great second half, but, I mean, he's still a sophomore, and this is a big game, and Morris was on fire. And instead, it's just that quick little fake, the delay. You give it to Morris. The defense bites as well as they could have, and then Morris has the speed and power to do the rest. I, that was a that was not only a great play, but it was a great play call uh, for for us. We didn't expect it. I don't know if the fans quite expected it, uh, but Desert Hills on their sideline, they knew what was happening, and it worked out really, really well. All right, we're going to go with a fourth down touchdown by Titan and Morris to tie the game late in the fourth quarter for Desert Hills, our AWP playmaker play of the game. Of course, Appliance Wholesalers Plus across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart and buy direct and save at AWP. Um, let's give some updates brought to you by Bucks Ace Hardware around Region 10. Yeah. What do we got, Rustin? Well, first and foremost, a couple games out there in Nevada tonight, Hurricane and Moapa Valley coming down to the wire. The Tigers, QB sneak for a touchdown, two-point conversion, no good. Hurricane 22, Moapa 20. That game's still in the third quarter. So Moapa and the Tigers getting tight out there in um, – I forgot the county Moapa's in. They're in Nevada. That's all you need to know. Also, Arborview, another Nevada team, they welcome Snow Canyon, one of our favorites here from the region, and that game was 0-0 forever. And you want to know how it finished, A.T.? Yes. The very end, it was 0-0 forever. Arborview, a late score from their running back. They win at 7 nothing, and uh, walk away with the victory. So Snow Canyon will fall to 1-1 after playing Arborview. Also, we know some other final scores tonight. Dixie ends up taking down Riverton, 17-13. So Flyers get on the board for the first time this year in the win column. And last year, this game ended 16-13, so 17-13 victory. I mean, it's not all that surprising, right? Crimson Cliffs was uh, in complete control against Spanish Fork. I'm going to have to find something there for you on a final, um, or if it's even gone final. I'll see if I can find that for you right now. Yeah, I think Crimson Cliffs was up big late in that game against the Dons. Yeah, it's uh, last update we had was in particular still barbing to Owen Peterson for 12 yards of touchdown, Crimson 34, Spanish Fork okay. 7. So, I mean, the outcome of that game, wherever it's at, pretty well decided. Amazing. Uh, I, I'm still blown away by the outcome here. It looked for a second just like, wow. Uh, with Desert Hills going down big and then coming out of the locker room. And we talk about the individual performances with our awards, but how about just completely defensively shutting down the run pretty much in the second half when you couldn't stop anything in the first half? So just an incredible adjustment coaching-wise and schematically for Desert Hills and offensively so many great play calls and gutsy performances all the way around. I wanted to mention... Another guy who deserved recognition for perhaps the playmaker play of the game, uh, the big fella for Desert Hills, uh, Sauta, Tamatasi Sauta, 
was awesome, especially in that second half. He yes. would penetrate. He would stand right there where they were running right up the middle, and there was nowhere for them to go. He had a couple tackles for loss, and he was in on a lot of those run plays that turned the game around for Desert Hills. I think, too, you bring up a really good point there because in a game where the Thunder had struggled to get any type of push on the defensive line, Salto was the one guy doing it consistently, and then his teammates begin to follow suit. So it, it's a lead-by-example type situation. That's exactly what he did. He created havoc all night long, even when those around him were struggling to do so, and eventually it paid off for, for everybody involved. So great, great job from him. We called his name multiple, multiple times tonight. And trust us, we remember calling his name multiple times tonight. You're listening to the Wilkinson's House of Lighting uh, post-game show. Let's go to the highlights from the second half, courtesy of our CEC television crew. And here's Thompson throwing over the middle, beautifully defended pass by, I think that was, that's uh, it's Tuckness. Tuckness. Mm -hmm. And another pass here to Jenkins, who was awesome. And a huge block there down the field by a lineman, and Jenkins played his heart out because he, he got up a couple times and was a little ginger and just played through it. First down get there by Kakai Baker. And then here's Lincoln Holmes with a stretch play, getting out of bounds. And the, the tempo change and the momentum change came on that drive when Tyden Morris leveled the boom, not as a runner, but as a blocker for his teammates and just changed the whole atmosphere of the stadium. Because that Holmes highlight, it ended up being called back, which led to that Kona Kroll score, gave him a little bit of life, and then the defense, Lou diving on the fumble created, is it, it just changed everything. Now Morris is involved. He runs out here. This hit right here, lowering the shoulder. Nobody is stopping him. Amazing. He had stiff arms. He That play where he just runs over the top of somebody, he is a horse. And then this one, another beautiful play called by Eggleston, I thought, pulling it out yeah. and throwing it to Polu. And that was Wall's second attempt in the second half. That, that was all he had really thrown, and that kind of uncorked his ability, his confidence, so to speak. And here's Wall. This was a beautiful throw, and he caught it. <laughs> You know, he caught it. He oh, caught it, right? And then Wall <laughs> he definitely caught it. powers it into the end zone. And it was nothing but huge smiles. He got a big hug from Noah Foylatololo on the sideline. And then broken coverage on a, th ah, was that a third down, Rustin? If it I was. Correctly. It was. It, it felt like it was a really big play, a lot riding on it, and just the defensive laps. However, after 28-21, didn't seem to matter. This drive, we didn't talk about this enough, but yeah. it was a masterful drive yeah. to get it back down to make it 28. We talked about the play call at the end, but they had to go a long, long way to get there. And get a bunch of conversions, and there's another stiff arm by Tide Morris. He was brawling tonight. And here's Wall ducking, and he had some runs. He had another he one that we might see uh, coming up here, but he's going to dump it off to Titan who, and another stiff arm, a little bit short. In the first half, Tyden had a drop, and ever since then, he was about as the play perfect of the game. right there. There's the play of the game, the touchdown on fourth down, a delayed kind of draw that went to the right side for the touchdown, and then here's Hunter Clark, our Ernie's player of the game, with how well he played defensively, creates a fumble, puts him to bed, <laughs> and then Tyden Morris, another stiff arm, Getting yardage. Man. And then for the win. There he is. Tristan John puts it away. And look at the reaction from the Thunder faithful as they win 31-28. And great highlights there from CEC. Thanks for listening to our Ideal Home and Paint game on the night on ESPN 97.7. Appreciate all of our sponsors, including We Win Injury Law, Wilkinson's House of Lighting, Bucks Ace Hardware, Fabulous Freddy's for helping us bring you all of the action tonight. Air Mountain Sports Performance. Um, our Star Watch player was Lincoln Holmes. He had a great game, but was kind of overshadowed by some of his teammates tonight with the great uh, games that they had. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll be back Monday, 4 to 6, right here on ESPN 97.7.